What do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band. Before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy see. helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well, they they're actually, they're they're they, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think they may have done yeah, yet. Yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. they're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah, yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at That's they were right. looking for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates Nick Cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> Were they friends of yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever read the uh, White Man, the White Van Man column in the Sun, Carl? I've seen it, Have yeah. you familiar with this? This is where every day in the Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper, mm -hmm. and he has to answer uh, or just give his opinions really on uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Because we know you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of your initial reaction to it's each of these. Top uh, all these, but you don't need to know about them. It's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so it's just your views. You know. Yeah. I have um, had a few days off this week. Remember, so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah. You, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I normally see the news, but I didn't. This okay. Week. Right. Um, so what are your view? What was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. You know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. That sort of... <laughs> right. Again, it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great face. It's a funny face you're pulling, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, you know, but, you know, a radio. And is that, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the, on the Monday or something, and it had, like, how he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Okay. Know, well, yeah. no, what's okay. the second right. question? Um... There have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> you think more youth clubs? <laughs> I like that. No, I can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's sort funny. of like you want to bobby on the beat that'll clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they've come Is out it, of it, national service... Yeah, yeah! No, I love that. And, it, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did, you, did you used to go to uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? You used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were right. there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so more, more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, t just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinion. than this. This is great. Oh, sent me to a prison for a massage. He's a massive. What sort of massage is it? Why do they need that access? Why do you need your ass doing? You don't get stress in your ass, do you? <clears throat> when you know they're in prison, you do want to know a, a little bit more detail, really. Just little things. How long have they been in? You know. Did anyone die? Did you do it on purpose? I think that's three fair questions, isn't it? You see, this is why she shouldn't be doing it. I don't know what she's in here for. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> How come he's not getting this? <sighs> Cheers. Anyone's watching this and they want to work in the beauty business and they're thinking, oh, I want to do massages and all that business. I'll go and whack them on the, on the head with a hammer. It doesn't send out the right signal. She dropped a bollock. She messed up in her life. Got to pay for it. You can't stay, Jack the Ripper, what do you want to do? Make some muffins, go on, then open a bakery. You've got a killer on the loose who's going, oh, I'd love to rub people's necks. Get out. And he said, why don't you come round to the office? So I said, what for? Because meetings with him are never proper meetings. Like I say, it's almost like a, I feel like his personal trainer. It's kind of, <laughs> let's, let's have a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he called up and he said, come round. I was like, what for? What are we going to do? And he said, oh, we can have a meeting. And I thought, oh. went along. <laughs> and his office is in a really nice part of, like, North London. Dead quiet, trees and stuff, really peaceful. Considering it's London, it's nice. And uh, I'm walking down this little alleyway to his office, and he, uh, stop, this is the round head police. <laughs> <laughs> Your head is too round, right? 
And this is like this really loud to the point of I was like, how's he managed that? And he'd, he'd fold up a piece of card and made like a megaphone. <laughs> and people were coming out of offices and stuff, and road workers were stopping the work going, what's that? And that's all he wanted me around for. When I got in, I said, what are we doing? He said, no, no, I just wanted to do that. In ancient Greece, every year, 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year, and they would propose laws, and everyone else would vote on them. And that was their obligation. They were obliged to be one of that 500, if they'd be like jury duty, called up, and then they had to propose their ideas, and then the rest of the citizens voted on it. Now, if you're in that position, all right, you're called up, what rules and laws are you instigating? You might go, right, I, I, want, uh, I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't want slavery. I don't want any sort of oppression. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave here. Mm. Mm. You, you weren't, though, because yeah, you were being paid and you were free. So. Definitely what were you mean? I wasn't free. I was on, like, from, from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. They, yeah, go, not, they wouldn't go, they go, well, I didn't have any actually, choice. um, actually, Mr Jackson, mm. um, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking of leaving no. your employment. No, um, the you. money's no good, no. and, uh, I don't like the, uh, the toilings. <laughs> no. They didn't have that choice. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did, The only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's <laughs> not, that's not, that wasn't, no choice. That, that's wasn't why, a, yeah. that wasn't the lack of choice given to most slaves. But the slaves, the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't at all option for them. It wasn't like they could no. go and, well, I, I could I get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, you're not saying anything. You're saying <laughs> absolute drivel again. Um, Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? That's amazing. Can you say it again? Say it again. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but a trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not gonna get any joy out of that. Right. But, if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about, sort of, planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not, I don't think it's directly it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah, That's yeah, good, yeah. yeah I, I think he means that future generations, but yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But that's, yeah. but you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, but I'm, I'm sort of guessing he, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment right. was in planting that oh, seed. We, we shouldn't can, have... It's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees. You know, you plant the tree, as you say, and you may never see the beauty of, or the benefit of that tree, but other people will. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life, and he's got a legacy and all that. But so by I... the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right, now there they have motorbikes, people flying round on them, mm. P people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. Mm -hmm. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're mm. whizzing around at high speeds. A lot mm. of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see their, those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying whoa, whoa, we're whoa, 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 whoa. You're saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because there's makes flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers everywhere. So with mm. death comes beauty. So that's another metaphor. You can have that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the most now, tortuous <laughs> things I've ever... That was extraordinary. But look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. I'm intrigued. Right. London... Councillor with his clipboard, need a speed bump here, I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. Mm. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not you very see good that the ones, they stuck to a lamp post with elastic band round them. <laughs> They don't look nice. He's not the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is, this, the point is this. Some 15 year old got run down and you're disappointed at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. <laughs> Fella lost his head here. Yeah. Geraniums? So, Geraniums? Fella lost bloody head? Well, Fucking that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the areas. No, what but you're if an area's nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, <laughs> you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. 
Because they go, I don't, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down this there and look so at the flowers. So now what you're saying is, because an area's grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it, in the course of doing that they knock people down, but then flowers are put up, which then makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. <coughs> well, they're cute to get out of their cars to, to put down flowers. And, <laughs> and they get to, knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Or other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fella outside our house who had a lamppost. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off because of the way you said it. But, but that's the thing. <laughs> he had a, he, he had a, oh God, there's a man, there's a guy in the house. He had a lamp post, he had a helmet on, but his head come off. <laughs> so you're saying that be, because in that one instance, the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached to his body. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. How far, how far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night and it's just too much. Very important point, you see. We give people crash helmets, we give them, you know, seat belts, we make them wear that, right? Do you think that's right for a start? Do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one, but yeah. then if, if, if you come off a motorbike and you hurt your head and you didn't have a helmet on, then you can't sort of go, well, they should have had speed bumps there. Yeah, I didn't realise we are going too fast. Don't forget, we're not just protecting him, he could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him, oh, if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet, let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, we're, we're over the top in this country no, but you, when it so comes you're to saying, that sort of If you're thing. saying, no, if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet, let him not wear a crash helmet. He wears, he doesn't wear a crash helmet, he comes off his bike, he smacks his head in, he's a vegetable. He's like that, <laughs> sitting at home like that. And yet the two little kids come to you, you're in charge, don't forget, we've put you in charge of society here, and they come to you, two little kids, they go, <sighs> President Pilkington, what? why did you let my daddy wear the... We're not wearing a crash helmet. I didn't. We paid, uh, we put leaflets through the door. We yeah. had adverts on the telly sun showing. Yeah, but, but it's why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted, it's... It's not the way we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's an helmet knocking about? No, he's, he's, he's a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. <laughs> why did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? Oh, mum, mum, mum left when he kept, he kept going on about not wearing a crash helmet. Oh, she I'm oh, put you in a home. I'm a <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. <laughs> yes, but this is interesting though because you were, you were particularly callous to that little four-year-old boy. He seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. Yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's a vegetable. vegetable. He's dead. Yeah. He's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crash helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want, if you wear a crash helmet or not. He wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. This was your, you were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he younger? He's a bit, he's a bit younger. Is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington. Uh, my brother's crying now because you shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Well, he won't listen to me because I'm not in charge of society. He didn't listen to me. Yeah, but it seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be no, honest. No, he did listen to you. What did he do you for a living? Because you made a new rule saying people don't have right. to wear crash helmets. Right. What? And he listened what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain oh, so he has got do... some common sense then. Well, there's nothing. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, but well, he can be bothered with helmets. I haven't got a daddy. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, you are cruel to this kid. You it's are just, mean I, this, all to I'm this saying kid. is, there should be a leaf with <laughs> I don't even know how he got in number 10, this little kid. The thing is. But he's got in, you should have at least the courtesy to listen to his point. Forget all, I'm, I'm sick and tired of having adverts on the telly. Don't smoke, wear an helmet, slow down, watch your kidneys, look after your <laughs> I liver. I haven't seen that one. Now, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs>
<laughs> Why can't they just put a leaflet through saying, hello everyone, use your common sense? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, that's because, I take because some people don't have common sense. Some Everyone's people got common sense. People are fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, they should, so it's not my fault that's then. Why yeah, that's not why there fault. is a government. If we let if we let people, they'd be fucking idiots. They'd be eating turkey Twizzlers and fucking watching Big Brother and X Factor but all day. Doing. They are and they're letting their kids run riot in but the street. What they are doing. Some families do just eat turkey Twizzlers. Yeah. There is little knobheads on bikes playing out till God knows what exactly. hour. Exactly. So it's happening anyway. But yeah, but that's no argument, is it? It's happening anyway. That's no argument, Carl. It's what we've talked about here. It's social responsibility. The reason people get into politics is because they feel it's their obligation to change those things. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah. I don't- I don't that the people who don't wear an helmet sort of to do themselves in and that's cleared them off. That's one problem sorted. So you think you, you're, you're being Darwinian. You're thinking survival of the fittest. The yeah. idiots will soon- but they don't. Because it, they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. It's the, you know, uh, a very good example is, um, okay, we've talked about it before, you know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous. We know now that smoking gives you cancer. But why is that still legal? And yet people know that and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy. And yet they still eat more. They get depressed, they're eating more. They know that they're, they're going to be constipated for a year and a half, but they're still shoving in chocolate cake instead of carrots. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop them? Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard. And you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Can't grab Ricky, there's a cupboard over there. <laughs> you've got to take some responsibility, haven't you? Now, if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> <laughs> so, back at the Chosen 500 in ancient Greece, right, you're one of them. What other things we- I, I like that saying, the one about, um, do to others as you'd like to be treated yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good one. Pop that on a leaflet. Pop it through the door. But you seem to be doing a lot of leafleting. That seems to be <laughs> your entire governance seems to be guided by <laughs> popping leaflets through doors. And I get a lot of leaflets, so I presume the rest of the country does, and it's not always working. So maybe yeah. sometimes you've got to instigate something a little bit more strong minded than fucking leaflets, my friend. But yeah. Maybe you've got to make a also, couple of laws. This thing that stand every up. individual can go, how would I want to be treated? Um, <laughs> well, I'd want someone to throw cake at me. Yeah. Because I'm a greedy bastard. I would want I, someone to steal my telly. I'd, I'd probably start on the way you look. Right, go on. I'd just, I'd just say, right, you know, make an effort, tidy up your house, and I'd, I'd have some sort of, um... I'm poor. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You can still tidy up, Can though. we get better houses, then? Because... Well, look after the one that we've let you. Yeah, get get rid of down. that old mattress that's in your garden there. <laughs> Clean the windows, and then we might give you a nicer one. <laughs> At the moment, you don't deserve anything nicer. And that's what I'm saying. You've got to be honest with these people. Wake them up. I like that. Sure, like you've got to be honest with them. You've got to wake them up through, through the heavy <laughs> leafleting <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But do you see, the problem with some of what you're saying, Carl, is that it's very hard to, uh, to enforce that in yeah. law because it seems unjust and unfair. You, you can't really start legislating against people's looks or whether they want, I mean, you, you have to keep your mean, house tidy. I mean, who decides how tidy it has to be? It's the tidy police. I mean, that's yeah. a strange. Well, hold on, though. I, I don't. I am. Um, I am. Um, I like wearing, sort of these these um, denims. It expresses who I am, and I like wearing a beard because I, I just think it's natural. I don't like really like shaving, and um, yeah, I, I I like this sort of smell. I like this smell of bo. That's um, who I am as a person. So I don't, how can you impose that on me just to be part of the society? Who are you to infringe my rights as an individual? I, I, what do you want out of life? Well, no, I, th I think I just like to say I, I don't. I don't want to conform. I don't want to just shave and wear a suit, and right. you know, I keep myself to myself. And I like to uh, just grow a beard and um, and eat and eat porridge with my hands. I'm not hurting anyone, so I don't know why. I don't know why I have to conform to that society. Well, I, so. There's nothing I can do for you. Mm. You're yeah, waste, wasting my time. Really. Yeah. Although I do feel ill, I need to um, I need to go to hospital now. Um, mm. So uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to hospital now. If that's all right. Is, is there is there is there care for me? Well, what's yeah. up with you? Um, I've got, I've got, um, diseases from, like, eating with my hands and there's like, things growing in my beard. Right. Um, so we just, we clean that up for me now. No, cos it's all been brought on yourself. Well, no, but that's, that's irrelevant. A lot of people bring things on themselves, but you can't just, like, ignore them cos it just pass on, it's a bad society. That, well, so how do they learn then? How I don't know why I'm being punished for being stupid. How do they learn then? Well, I don't understand well, why I've got to worry about well, you. I've got, well, I've got proper ill people. 
Well, there. I had a kid whinging at me this morning because his dad was among. <laughs> See, in China, you can only have uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we we've got to. Um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid, okay. as opposed to you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm. But if it's but someone it, but, who's, oh who's, yeah, but then so but social then, engineering, you want to yeah, do yeah, but then but hold on. Though, but what use are they then? If you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So who's the deciding kid who who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? What? I was brought into a poor family. Yeah, no, I'm talking I'm talking really poor. So third world? No. Well, poorer than that. Poorer than no money at all. No, somewhere in the middle again. You've gone too far the other way. Okay, Why has so it always got to go the other way? Cornwall. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. <laughs> like, so hang on. So let's imagine so, that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. And me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why not? Because um, uh, he's, he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was, it was t ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And what's... The, uh, you meant to have 300 million tiny ones and he had one big one it was horrible i had to pull it out it was like a leech and uh and also i've uh it was no po I, haven't, I haven't got a vagina so it was no place completely to smooth down there like an action man yeah it was just that i don't know uh, but we we love children and um uh, uh, uh we wondered if we we could um have a child what do you do for living what what do you do what's your work uh i'm a rapist <laughs> Right. And I dispose of the bodies. Right. Uh, well, fill out this <laughs> form. I should have clarified <laughs> a rapist murderer. Uh, yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. I did it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say. So, uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the bodies and I hadn't made that one. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I That was our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he doesn't, well, he doesn't rape. I work in a, work in an office. He works in an office um, in, uh, in, uh, in the town. But to, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have, uh, we adopt a little a little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents, we're we very think. Good parents. How, what's, what's that based on? Well, well nice we're good people, it? you know, mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes. We're God-fearing people. We believe that, um, uh, God is watching all of us and, um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, he tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes he does, yeah. Uh, particularly, um, we, we've stoned a couple of homosexuals this week alone. Cause it, uh, so we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, we don't believe in God. We're um, we're a, a from an atheist and believe that our time on earth is, is is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms, mate. All right. Uh, well, you filled out. But we've form. already we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because yeah. um, we we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking right. again. Little joke joking again. We want, little joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um, Gay accountant. <laughs> Uh, Some would say the same thing, only yeah, joking, of I course. Think, I think there's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual, so we're, we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't care whether you get a homosexual or a heterosexual, but um, I'll tell you, by the time he's 14, he will be as, um, as queer as the Ace of Spades. Right, so you filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pop that in, get it processed. Right. Okay, but what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None, none really. No. <laughs> Just my job. You're happy. Just You're happy my job with us. to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we're living now. <laughs> oh, oh uh, God. We don't want a child. We don't want a child, actually. But do you know where we could buy a knife? <laughs> <laughs> Start with capital punishment. Do you believe in the death penalty? Yeah, if, uh, if they know for certain that. Well, how do you know for certain? If they say I did it. Well, people have confessed before and been lying, haven't they, to get attention or something? Why would you, why would you lie? I mean, you might be protecting someone else. Uh, the love of, a, of a, a parent for their child who's committed a terrible crime might say I did it. There's loads of reasons. How, how can you kill someone? How can you make that a definitive ending when you can never know? Because that person wouldn't do it again because then they'd know, wouldn't they? What? Say if I did a murder. Yeah. You said, I'll take the rap for it. Yeah. Right? You go and get hung. Yeah. I can't do a murder again because they'll go so it wasn't him. 
There's well, well there's, be, no, there's loads of reasons people. Uh, uh, if you're mental, if you're a serial killer, you don't stop because you think you might get caught. So what are you asking me? I was asking you, do you believe in the death penalty? No. Well, you, what, what do you want me to say? I don't know what the right answer is. Well, it's what you think. We're having a discussion. I said, I said, if, if they've done it and that. Yeah, do them in, yeah. Could you pull the rope? Could you release the guillotine? Why am I getting involved in it? Well, if you believe in it, sure you, surely if you believe in it, you should be able to stand by it. Well, what, which one is it? Which one have I got to do? What, what button am I pressing? Does it matter? Well, yeah, it's different, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't hang someone, but you'd... Bang. So what do you do when you hang someone? You kick the stool away? <laughs> 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 what do you do? Well, it probably is, I don't know, it's probably more sophisticated now. It used to be a trap door, didn't it? So you just go like that. It's an easy gig. That's a job. That's someone's job. Okay then, okay, we're not getting anywhere in. If you had to be killed, right, would you rather be hung, beheaded, burnt at the stake, or lethal injection? Probably, uh, probably injection. Definitely. He said, so you know, you just go to sleep. What if I tell you, everything else is the same, but with a lethal injection, as he injects it, he just slips his finger up your ass for a laugh. Why would that happen? Is that in small print? I've been telling <laughs> that before. <laughs> I'm just saying, would it make a difference if you were going to die anyway? So, it, you just lay down like that, like, he just injects it and goes, okay, just go, he's just... Why is he doing that? What? Why is he doing that? Just for a laugh, why not? To laugh. Well, yeah, if he's killing you, if you're worthless to society, why doesn't he help? He might as well put his finger up your ass. What's it up to you? What's to you? It doesn't make any difference to you, is it? You're going to die in a minute. And do I know he's going to do this? Yeah, it's, well, I'm, you, not, I'm not happy. So what is it then? Lethal injection with the finger up the ass. Hang in. I'm not happy with the finger up the ass. <laughs> no, you're not. But you're not. Surely you're not happy being put to death. I just say, what, what, hang on a minute. What, what's what? Why are you putting gloves on? Why are you getting that finger to get me ass? He maybe doesn't put gloves on. Why does he put gloves on? Well, I'm, I'm not happy with that. But it's nothing to do with you, Carl. Well, what do you have? I'd have a lethal injection without the finger on my ass. That's not your choice, though. You've done an awful crime. I'm not having a finger up the ass. Hang me, then. <laughs> well, you'd rather be hung than a lethal injection with just, just popping the finger up your ass. I don't want that. So okay, um, uh, my other have your head cut off. You know about the, uh, are you, are you still alive for about 30 seconds? I see you had your head cut off. Wouldn't have thought so. You see, this is, again, you know, you believe the monkey's talking away. Well, it's nerve reactions, isn't it? You're not alive as such. Well, they got him to walk um, years ago, whenever they did the last sort of head chopped off thing. Yeah. How long ago was that? I don't know. A few years ago, right? Yeah. And um, they said to him, right, you're going to die in that. You've come yeah. to terms with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, a bit of fun. Right? Um, Think about the arse? No, no, no. Going to do a white line on the pavement. Bollocks. How could they tell him that that's what they were going to do? So he was meant to what? Remember this and walk the white line without a fucking head? Well, that, this is what they did. Well, no. They painted a white line, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He said to him, right, we're going to cut your head off. Yeah. There's the line. Have a look now. Right, so you know where it is. Carl, think what you're saying. I was... How is he going to remember it without a head? No, you remember, you, you remember... Well, where's the memory? Where's the memory? In his legs. Where do you think you store memory? In your fucking arms. Yeah, but if you do it quick enough, if it's like, go, and, and you... No, he's walking there, head. And he's, he's walking, and he walk... He, no, 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 it's bollocks, it's he bollocks. Did, he did 35 steps. Bollocks. It's not it bollocks, is. though. Because it's how can bollocks. the body remember what his head was told a few seconds ago? His head's now in a basket. Yeah. The body doesn't go, what's on to, sorry, what was I meant to do? I know, I was meant to walk along. Well, you they did it, it was a test. Well, no, it wouldn't happen. You're talking shit again. Okay. Believe in absolute yeah. bollocks. So you with the monkeys and the Shakespeare. <laughs> That's what annoys me. It's not about monkeys, is it? It's about random. Yeah. So you'd have lethal injection? Lethal injection, yeah. I think that is best. Now, a big discussion about donor cards. Of course, there's no reason not to give your kidneys away after your death to all your organs. They're no, no good to you and you'll be helping life. It's, it's, it's perverse to me that you wouldn't want to donate your body to a, a worthy cause after your death.
medical research, whatever. Um, you agree with that, don't you? Um, well, you know how I feel about it a little bit. I don't like the idea of certain bits. Why not? What does it matter? Just because there's certain bits that are really personal to you, aren't they? No, there's not. What, what, what bit is more personal than another bit to you? Well, like I've said, my eyes. They're my eyes. They see stuff I like. Yeah, Now, but what happens if they, someone else has them, and, and they start looking at stuff I don't like? I don't you, like the idea of that. But that's ridiculous, because your eyes are, <laughs> they're just bits of tissue. They, they haven't got no, your... No, but we don't, we don't know, because they've found out know. there's something called a cellular something or other that I've told you about, about the person who had right. some sort of operation and ended right. up liking yellow biscuits. I've yeah, told but, you about Yeah, them. but that's bollocks. It's the same you thing told with us the about eyes. it, but I dismissed it as bollocks well, immediately. But other, Not just because you said no. it, because it was intrinsically bollocks. No. But it could work the other way anyway, where no. the person who has my eyes starts like looking at ants and insects and stuff. I'm right, all bollocks. On. Again, this is all bollocks. Got none of your memories, none of your thoughts, none of your reasoning, n nothing of you, none of your personality. They're just a collection of cells that now have light going through them and making this new person see. They're a lens. Mm. They're a lens. That's all they are. Mm. So there's no there's no reason why, you know, this was the crazy thing, isn't it, when people started saying that they wanted their organs to go to a particular race of person, and, that, and obviously that's illegal. Mm. Um, also, it shouldn't be the choice, really. I think you should have that um, opting out, that you have to say that you don't want your organs given after, and if you die, then they assume that the, those organs are up for grabs, because there's a, there's a shortage. So what do you think of that? Like I say, they can have, they can have certain bits. They're not having the eyes. I, I think that's nice. fair. They, what, can they have the cock and balls? Uh, I'd prefer it if they didn't. You're saying no, no one's gonna have my eyes or my cock and bollocks. What ever. if the tables were turned? Yeah. What if someone said, Carl, you've lost your cock and bollocks in a terrible accident? Sorry, right, we put some flowers at the scene of it, it's brightened that area up. <laughs> but, um, we've found a, a donor who's happy to give, him, give you his cock and bollocks. He's dead, but his cock and bollocks we kept on Would ice Would you accept then. them? They're, they're absolutely lovely match. Better than yours. Yeah. Bigger, younger. Yeah, you want all of them. You'd have so them. you would, so you see, you'd have someone else's cock and bollocks, but then you wouldn't donate yours to someone but else. What about this? What if you, what if you discovered later, right, that the person who donated the cock and bollocks, right, was a sex pervert? <laughs> was it was a homosexual sex pervert? I, I don't think though that I'd bother <laughs> looking into the history of these cock and bollocks. You'd it's not like uh, you know. <laughs> you accept the willy nilly, but what <laughs> if what if you you just found out by that chance? That was his name. That was his name, willy nilly. That was his stage name. And what come on and show them by chance. How do I find out by chance? What's the scenario? They there? say, well, the doctor goes, I should um, tell you, and I, I know you believe in a load of shit about yellow biscuits and bollocks like that, so I'll just tell you in case anything goes weird. This was a sex pervert's um, cock and bollocks, so uh, if you if you find that you're sticking these through letterboxes, don't worry, it's not your fault. It's where they wanted to have gone. That's. Uh, Would it concern you if you accepted the cock and bollocks that had a past like that? Yeah, because the problem is, it wouldn't be that bad if I had his eyes. Right. Why? Because then I'm seeing what he wants to see and- That doesn't and make any it. sense at all, but, but unfortunately, It makes no though. sense at all. You, you, the match is wrong. The eyes don't go with the cock and bollocks anymore. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, something's gonna lose out here. Either the, the, the cock and bollocks, they're not gonna get what they want anymore, or the eyes are gonna be upset. <laughs> so are you scared of the idea to go back to your yellow biscuit analogy, the, the, the cock and bollocks you inherit, the, whatever the previous owner did with them- Lives on. Bollocks. That scares you, does it? Okay, there's one final scenario here, Carl. Okay. You've, uh, you haven't opted out, so your, your organs go to where they like. Now, unbeknownst to you, uh, there's a big waiting list, there's a thing, they've got, they've got all your details and you said, yeah, whatever, I don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know, would you, after you die, where it goes. You say, I don't, because you've said, you don't want to know. If you don't know, you have a lovely life. When you die, they can go anywhere. They can do what they will, okay? Now, unbeknownst to you, they have got it down. They've donated your ass, right, for use, um, to a gay rapist with AIDS, okay? So they are, they are saving a life there. So when you die, they go, right, we're gonna, it's still warm. Get that gay rapist with AIDS round here, because that's going to stop him raping someone, give him AIDS. He comes round, he's straight up there. He's jacking you, right? It's, he, you're, you're basically saving a life, right? We're letting him do that, right? Sorry, okay. sorry, I'm confused here. What? Why is the 
gay rapist with AIDS got the arse? What's no, he's, he no he's, he's, he's still connected to Carl. They've donated the arse, so when, when Carl dies, the doctors go, right, we're gonna stop a, a terrible thing here. So the gay rapist can, can shag the yeah, arse? Yeah, he shags, come round, he shags Carl, gets out of his system and goes, phew, mm. that stopped me. Yeah. Right? Okay. Right, so... So it's just Carl's disembodied arse on a... No, 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 it's the whole, it's the whole Carl. Oh, they so go, like Carl's so, dead. So they Carl, they Carl could get struck and he's having a heart attack. They go, free, <laughs> clear, <laughs> they go, no, we've lost him. At 10.01, they go, oh, he's a arse donor. And they go, okay, get the, where's the nearest gay rapist with AIDS live? Next door, get him round here. They go, okay, the, the gay rapist comes round and goes, where is he? Right? He goes, there he is, right? So Carl is face down. Now they turn around, they go, there, there's the arse, you've got ten minutes, then we got to bury him. I'm surprised you didn't know this guy was living next door. <laughs> right, right. So, the gay rapist gets on top, he goes, right, this is lovely, right? He's loving it, he's shagging your... Right, now, this is the weird thing. The doctors next door, they go, okay, the gay rapist will be finished soon, um, and then we have to bury him, but we should inform his next of kin. They go, oh, it's Suzanne. They go, um, your husband's, uh... Uh, Daddy's avatar. She goes, oh my god, you come round and just identify the body. Um, uh, I'd leave it a couple of minutes, but um, then, <laughs> then come round. She goes, oh god, I'll be right there. So Suzanne's on her way, the gay stuff. rapist, right? He's, he's pummeling you away, right? But, you will not believe this. Oh my god. The movement and the way he's shagging you, right, has started, started your heart. <laughs> oh, wow. right, right? This is a stroke of amazing good <laughs> yeah, fortune. right? So you go, oh, oh, um, he goes, ah, oh, right? He, right, has a heart attack, <laughs> right? And he flops down on you. He just like headbutts the back of your head. So now, you're both naked, this gay rapist is up your ass, he's dead, right? The shock is a, you go, fuck me, how can I get out of this, right? You wriggle, you fall onto the floor. So now, He's on the bottom, face up, you're on top of him, he's still in you. His cock is up your ass. you're sat on him, wriggling, Suzanne walks in, goes, Carl, what the fuck are you doing? She's heard about me being dead, and she, cause she's come to yeah, the hospital. She, yeah, yeah, she goes, and they go, he's in there, and she goes, he's not dead, I can see him. They go, oh, the kid's been terrible. She bursts in, there you are, on top of him, wriggling to try and get his knob out your ass. right? You're sitting on a, a man who's dead, what do you say? I just say we got a John Dooper. <laughs> Carl, I'd like to ask you, if I may, stop twiddling that. Now, this is interesting, you, you were fiddling with a bit of plastic there and it was annoying me, and I know that a lot of things annoy Ricky, get mm. very infuriating for him. Um, <clears throat> social etiquette. Now, that's a very, uh, that, that's not obviously inscribed by law. These are just things which have built up in society. So, for instance, it's impolite to sneeze and then shake someone's hand. Yeah. It's, um, or sneeze straight in their face and yeah. go, oh, sorry, I've got swine flu. Now, those things are obviously good practice in terms of avoiding the spread of disease, so that makes sense. But other things well, are so it's just more Also, it be disgusting. If, so, if someone hasn't got a disease, I don't like to see someone sneeze on the pavement or sniff or scratch their ass. So social etiquette, I mean, how do you decide, I mean, what... What prevents you from being truthful and honest at all times? I don't know, there's something in you. And sometimes you can just pop it out, can't you? Uh, I've been in a situation when I've said stuff and I've thought, why did I say that? Go on. But it's not always... Uh, in the dentist. Last time I went to the dentist. I sat in the reception bit. Big fat woman comes up the stairs. Massive she was. <laughs> Had a right sweat on. <laughs> uh, right. She gets there and... Um, out of breath. <sighs> Yeah, she was, oh. again, you know, I mean, she was friendly, dead friendly, but kind of like, you know, leggings on, uh, sort of, you know, shoes, but not on properly, she, she was stood on the heel. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, she couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's like, greasy air, um, and she went up, and she's been all, all happy and everything, and I think that's what annoyed me. So when she sort of said, oh yeah, I've lost weight, she was talking to the woman behind the counter. And she sort of said, yeah, I find it really difficult, especially living where I live and having to come down this high street because there's so many cake shops and everything. And she sort of said, you know, today I've walked past normally. I always have a, a coffee and a donut. But today, you know, I didn't have a coffee and a donut. And I just said, why was it shut? <laughs> right? No, you didn't. I did, honestly. <laughs> Honest to God, on my mum's life, I said, why was it shut? 
She said, oh, Hold yeah. on, why did you butt <laughs> in? You she wasn't even talking Honestly, to you. I know, it's really, really weird. It's Wait, really weird. Did you have weird. to shout across the dentist's waiting room? Or no, no, it was just, it was a, it's a small waiting room, you see, you got the stairs, you go in, you got about four chairs, and then this old desk, and I, I get on with a woman behind the counter, and I always sit close to it, and it was just me there, and I was talking to her about going to Corfu or something. She comes in sweating like some bison <laughs> at the stairs, <laughs> and, and she's there, and because she was showing off, it was like, well, you should have done it a long time ago. I think yeah. she, she annoyed me that she wanted some sort of pat on a on a big hefty fat back <laughs> that she hadn't bothered having a donut that day. Now maybe it's the enemy that just came out because I remember saying it and actually getting home saying to Suzanne, oh, I said this and I didn't even think I'd, I don't know. I know where what it you came mean from. though. Sometimes you sometimes you want to go around with people and they're going, oh, I, I need. You want to put them down? You want to yeah. go? I'm, I'm stocking out with you because you're going to go straight back to that and do this that. You know, I know you've had a lot. Just inject them in the head. Absolutely pointless. Get rid of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But talking about social etiquette, I was in a um, flying to uh, Edinburgh. And I was with um, Matt, my uh, uh, assistant, and um, there was a bloke on a mobile phone across the way, right? He's going, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get on the plane now. And he kept talking that loudly to people, right? And I was fuming. Then he stopped and made another call. And I, I was giving him dirty looks, and Matt was going, no, sit down, sir. And, uh, and then he was going, I am in the airport. And I shouted, he's in the airport. He didn't notice. I was shouting over. I was fuming and fuming, and Matt was just getting so embarrassed. But well, they don't see it, though. And people were looking at me like I was the mental case. Yeah. yeah. But it was so fucking loud, and I moved through to another place. But I wanted to get someone. I wanted to be policed. I wanted to go, right, there's a cunt over there swigging beer, thinks he's a fucking Gordon Gecko player, and he's not. He's some cunt who's got his first mobile phone. Right? But, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is infringing. That is like, that's like passive smoking to me. Yeah. It annoys me when you hear these uh, awful middle class parents talking to their kid loudly enough to let everyone know what their kid knows. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, they, they they bring up conversations because they're showing off about the kid. They, they, um, Toby, what's that you were saying earlier about you preferred Beethoven to... Right, okay, if that kid talks about Beethoven and Chopin, right? It, do you know what I mean though? Yeah. It's okay. like people showing off, yeah. thinking that the world is interested in everything they fucking say. That that thing about um, everyone's got access, which is fine, but it's mm. those fat fucking morons on docu soaps that go, "I speak as I fucking th think." You f useless fucking blob of shit. Yes. <laughs> Have an education. Research, yeah. think, discuss, then offer your opinion. And stop your kids chewing on a fucking big ball of fat. Your um, leg. Got someone specific in mind there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something and be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella. Yeah. Um, what year? Ages old, ago? Old times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? And, uh, Does he wear flares in the uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that your reason? No, it's it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh, yeah. he's electric. He's electric. And um, <sighs> if he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time, Ugh. and he'd be having a bath, and everything would be all right, and then the power would sort of switch on in his body, and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> So. <laughs> what do you mean, so? What is that so? What does that so mean? You've given us nothing. You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Right? Electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> what was that one called? Yeah, but they. they, they but it's, not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they. they, they, they <laughs> not his vault. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be something about I think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way around. <laughs> I think you should tell fault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Right, let's leave it. Play it <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? you're in a bad mood. The oh, Carl, I'm dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one. Do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again because we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one. What's that? What am I going to learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. 
Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? No, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, <laughs> I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With the, with the big horn on it? Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them. Right? So they'd be listening oh, to so the you'd put a sock in the and you'd put, mute. you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the, that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat. If they're true, I'm assuming they are. It works. It's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. So you know, I do don't. You see, do you understand the distinction though between that one and Electrical Man? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, or <laughs> I've hit me head. I can hear you, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference though? Or uh, are not, all, all not three? Because really, I, when I read all three, I took something away. From all of them. What, what did you, you take, take away, away from the electrical man? I just thought, oh, imagine that. Imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not education, is and it? And it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Well, think about it, right? We take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah. Yeah. This guy, he can't even have a. You know what I mean? It's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands and yeah. you can relax? This guy can't even do that. He might be alright for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it because at any moment it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair because it keeps going a mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his favourite- you. No, he can't. <laughs> does he- does he fight crime? What does he do with his powers? <laughs> yeah. I think he just has to sit around because no one- he can't work with machinery. Right. Because it'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it. What can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, he can't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry yeah, initially. Just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like- <laughs> Yeah! Well, all, yeah. All, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was the and other the, the girl- the girl death, <laughs> four years hits her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from there? What is that? Well, mm. imagine- imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died? When I choked on a Mr. Freeze pop? <laughs> Right. No, what, tell what? us that one again. No, I told you, didn't tell I? Tell us again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They won't. They weren't listening. Go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, get, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that and we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food <laughs> and we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday really so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that, but they would like, need a, it's a, it's, I imagine him like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, uh, uh, licking your parents' mouth for food so, as they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're empty in the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze pop <laughs> and knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't, it wasn't frozen, so I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right, yeah. and I was choking, right, and I nearly died. It, it must have been about, how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes to do right, it. I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> right, I was, uh, <laughs> I was really close <laughs> to dying. <laughs> How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me, did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like, <laughs> there's loads of instances of him eating pops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> just was dead. Forty of those. Whatever, what, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think <laughs> which elements would stand out for you? Do you think? <laughs> what? what? Uh, Start now. Go back. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah. yeah. Just anything right. now. Being in a hall and having our dog licking my face. <laughs> 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 That's your earliest memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Well, zoom. What's the next one? Oh, yeah. Right, next oh, one's probably die. what being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah, was that little, your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what are we doing? <laughs> Right, so anyway, I'm intrigued by the right. dog that was licking your face. Well, bin that. <laughs> Can we work with that? Rock no, it's busters. a great feature. I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what what you consider oh, to be mics. education. Oh, I'm funny. Right. I fell over. All right, well, all right. I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll work on it next week. Play a tune, and what have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. We've got to do the competition. We've only got twenty. Yeah, we'll come on then. Quick, then. Do something. Play a tune. We'll come back with Rockbusters. What are we playing? Let's play a bit of two pack. I'm not that interested in it, to be honest. What do you mean? I've got no interest in Law and Order whatsoever. It's not part of my life.
That's the problem. You keep picking topics that don't buzz me. <laughs> of course they do. They don't. Well, Not let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. You're, you're a man quite obsessed with law and order. Based on what? Well, law and order is basically to protect the innocent, isn't it? I mean, when we think of law and order, we usually think of crime and punishment, but it's all about protect our person. We have the right to walk the streets without getting mugged. When someone wrongs us, we want justice. It's fundamental. And you do. You were sitting in your old flat in London, phoning me every day that you wanted to go downstairs and smack their heads in for being late and shouting around and being drunk, and you could hear it. You wanted some justice. Yeah, but nothing would have happened if I called someone up and said there's people doing noise pollution. Even though there's a there's a law for noise pollution now, it's not really taken seriously, is it? Well, see, you are, see, but you are you are concerned with law and order. No, you but wanted no your point. rights, and right, you ended up moving. You've, he's moved in now. He's moved to lovely sunny Hampstead, just down the road from us. So you're having a better life. Yeah, so but I shouldn't have to move because of some noisy people. No, you shouldn't. But I'm saying you were stressed. No one cares though. And you wanted justice, but you c you thought you couldn't get justice, so you moved away. Yeah, which so is... I dealt with it in my way. Yeah, I right. hated him. Right. Because they didn't care about anyone else. Exactly. But the police wouldn't get involved. There's other people who live around there who had to put up with it. But no one cared. So what did it feel like every night when you were trying to watch telly and it's hot and you've got the window open or...? No, yeah, you could just hear stuff. And, other, you know, it's it's that thing of you get a lot of tourists in London, so they're talking. It's not even as if you can listen in to what they're saying and have a have a view on their opinion because they're foreign. <laughs> Is that, would so that you be can't... entertaining for you? Well, yeah, because if you can hear what people are saying, you go, oh, yeah, that's a Switch good point. Switch the telly off. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a good know, point. There's, there's some I sort don't of... want to hear anyone talking. I'll tell you what, I feel, really feel sorry for people with, like, neighbours from hell. Because it's, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's justified, but I can see why people go mental with someone when they're bullied or, you know, constantly harassed and no one cares. And when you can't go to the police, you can't go to the police and go, there's a bloke next door, he's got his telly on his he's always pissed, he's shouting about, if you don't do something, I'm going to go around there um, and crack his head in. You, you're the, be the one that... But isn't it your own fault for living in central London? Well, not really, because it wasn't always like that. I'd been there years, and then all of a sudden... You know, good fellas turn up. <laughs> they sat down there making a racket. What can you say to them? You call down, they can't hear the phone ringing. Could I just say that good fellas wasn't a pizza joint? He no. called the loud people that because he thought they were gangsters. Right, they sure. did what they wanted and yeah. sat outside and yeah. So, uh, but it's louder. I think it is louder abroad than it is here. Whenever I go away on holiday, I always notice that it's always a couple of decibels higher. Really? Always. Like the sound of bird noises and that are louder abroad <laughs> because they're trying to get a nut above the noise of the noisy people. No, that's not true. Yeah, when I was in, where was I? Menorca or something. It was like lying there. If it wasn't a noisy local, it was the people in the villa next door. If it's not them, they suddenly collected the bottles from the bottle bank. That's a nice noise when you when you're just relaxing. The bottle bank. Just pop that there where the villa is. <laughs> so that was a racket. There was always some. There was just <sighs> so much noise. Animals, oh. creatures. You can't. Noise. You can't escape. It's the one thing you can't escape. Noise. Your ears never turn off. No. <laughs> They're always there. But I've told you before. Wear earplugs if you have to. I don't like it. But he doesn't like. He, can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. <laughs> well, there's always a sound. Like your eyes, you can close them. My eyes close all the time, and if, if, if I don't like the look blinking. of something, yeah. no, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something, they they close before even I've thought about if I want to see it or not. <laughs> what, do you think? what do you think exactly? I just mean if if I see something on the telly or like one of those casualty programs or something. Yeah. It's like my eyes know that I'm not going to like the look of it. But no, 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 no. So they You're, close no, 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 quicker. No, 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 no. My ears, they oh. they seem to be interested in everything, <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what I mean is, you can't close your ears. Yeah, you that's can't, what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you can never... So that's no, why I, I like the idea that your eyes are closing when you were... Oh, I was watching that. Yeah, what are you doing, it, Have your eyes, have your no, eyes I mean, ever closed something that you're going... That no, you're but they normally get it right. Your eyes aren't <laughs> making any decisions. Right. You're making decisions. You turn away because you don't like seeing something. You don't turn away and then you're going, what was that? And your eyes going, you don't want to know. <laughs> you do not know. Wanna, you don't know well, I'm just Carl. saying anyway. Mm, lovely pair of tits here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just mean noise pollution. It's the it's the one thing you can't.
There's always someone doing well out of me. There's always someone if, I go, if, if they're a little bit short, we all go around to Pilkington. But uh, that, I mean, it's three or four times a day. Sometimes I call him up and he goes, right, the washing machine's broken. They came round, they've done this, right? They couldn't fix it, but they had to call it charge 90 quid. I called the bank and said, no, they can't do that. Turns out they can't do it. It's like a string of things where you, it, it looks like Carl's handing out money, like the end of a comic book. He goes, that's for the broken window and there's for my sausages. It's like a queue of people yeah, just yeah. taking money off Carl. Yeah. I don't know, they're normally all right if I'm face to face with them. Really? Yeah, if I can sort of, you know, if I can go in a place, but a lot of stuff now is done on the phone. Yeah. You know, it's all phone, isn't it, because no one's, it's all over the world where you're speaking to these people. Yeah. I was talking to someone the other day about the alarm system, right, in the flat. <laughs> Called them up, uh, thought, oh, it'd be good to get this going again. Uh, you know, have an alarm system, I haven't had one for years. Might as well use it, it's there. So, uh, I called them up and said, uh, yeah, there's an alarm system in this flat I've bought. I uh, want to get it going again. What's the situation? So uh, they took a load of details and stuff. And they said, right, uh, what you have to do, uh, it's 400 quid a year. So what? <laughs> so 400 quid a year. I said, what's that for? I said, if the alarm goes off, we can guarantee that a couple will be there in like a minute and a half. <laughs> I, said, I, I, I said, I don't want that. I said, I'm just happy with the alarm just going off. I'll give the keys to the neighbour. No, you can't do that. You've got to have this this way. I said, four, 400, I said, I thought alarms are meant to stop you being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want, sir? I don't understand sarcasm no, when you're talking to them people. Yeah. Just to get out of your system, when you know you've been conned, you just laugh in the face of adversity. You, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to my school. <laughs> and, uh... When I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to I'm going to see my mum dad tomorrow. Oh yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school sort of school photographs with the uh, big headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, no, nobody bought bought those sort of school photos because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, no. Well, <laughs> no. No, he said they said sales would you know because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so, I would uh, love them. Yeah. That's why I'd buy them. Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the metal piece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Hmm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know. When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there, was weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call son. it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. He was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a, for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his, like, legs dangling over and they'd be going to, like, the, like, the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, sort of bald-headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And bring oh. out your ill. <laughs> and then just, people just throw, Grandad just did the back and go, yeah. right, we're getting four quid for Grandad. But, but, but she's got a lovely quite... pair of testicles on him. They're she... very low, but they're extremely... Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to, uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but... She'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective, uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of <laughs> now, I've heard, oh, still be here, yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you're picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and, uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was alright. And how was the husband? Did, 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 was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like, ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the No, just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's yeah. good. Just you to can't, do it you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I 
think impersonating a police officer. Well, you probably did. There, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop. But I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was. Uh, you know, but let's, let's face it. It's you know, he's he's not going to be caught because wh why would anyone know? But it's not like his son's going to say it on a on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did this, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work. <laughs> <laughs> just whatever. With him and his mate. Just you know, if they saw something going on, they go, "What can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do? Or whatever." <laughs> That's fantastic. That's, that uh, is brilliant. Right. Okay. Uh, coming up, knob news and monkey news and monkey news. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. Talking about, um, your parents listening, Carl, it was in Heat this week, and, uh, they mentioned that he does this thing on Sky, what is it? Uh, it was this thing with Richard Bacon, some program about watching telly, and you yeah. just talk about what you're watching, mm -hmm. and that. And he was annoyed, cos he said cos his parents are there, and so he's not doing it. He's not gonna turn up, cos they he mentioned it in Heat. And so his parents might watch? Yeah. Why no, are you I worried about that? I don't like him watching stuff, do I? I told you. It, well, Dates back to when I did Little Donkey at school. Sure. I don't want people watching me. <laughs> What's that? Just <laughs> renew us on Little Donkey? What happened? It was just, you know, I was there to play the drums and that, uh, in We Three Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was loving it, you know. I got a bit carried away. How old were you? About 13. Yeah. Right? Really? Probably. Yeah. About 10, no, about 10 probably. Yeah. yeah. Six. Go on. Um, between six Where and Where old were you? What school were you at? Uh, <laughs> okay, you were playing little yeah. donkey. So, yeah. and, uh, no, 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 no. No, you but must... it was one of them schools where everyone sort of was in the same one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a Manchester school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just what the one do you mean? Well, it's like you, what, sweeping chimneys in the day, and then uh, one hour of learning. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What school were you at? Was it infants, junior, or secondary? I didn't really do that. It was what, one way. What do you mean? You, do you that? did that. They still have to abide by the laws of the land in Manchester. No, but it was a, it was a lot more. Like, like, you had infants, but yeah. you also had, like, the older lot. There's kids there who, when you're in the younger year and that, you'd see kids and you go, is that- Talk English and use terms that people do when they're, they're talking about schooling. I don't even want to talk about this. No, how old were you? What, what oh. I'm think- I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight. So you went from thirteen <laughs> to six? Yeah, but like I say, it's hard to remember because- <laughs> Imagine if you were giving evidence <laughs> in a trial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, I can't really narrow it down other than seven years either way. You know, theoretically, yeah. he could get called up for jury service. <laughs> <laughs> That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. That Carl, Carl jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine it was a really, really important Trial. Well, what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by twelve good of men your and peers? true? Twelve good, good men, men and, and true. true. Yeah, good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only thing days. I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection! I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rockbusters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client standing trial oh. is a little gay Chinese fella, and here are some of the tapes <laughs> yeah. from XFM. What was he He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you do just you get called up and you have to do you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not. I normally have Mondays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't like oh, that. Oh, yeah, or you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, don't get me involved. Because I got involved once. <laughs> don't get me involved. No. What do you mean you got involved once? <laughs> well, with the police and that, when I lived in Manchester, I saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. Hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah. Because Snitch. I thought, well, I know, <laughs> well that's just it, but I thought, I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my ca well. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me, I'm stood there with my underpants on, right? And, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this to call up the, uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's being robbed. And they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. And where go, do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's, she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away, so, you know, we'll we leave it. And she's like, no, uh, we'll track it down, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, look, I, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some lads, see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. 
pushing a car. Yeah. The, the, that's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country, they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. You just sort of like, in start Manchester. the engine. You get away a lot faster. <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them. <laughs> exactly. Say, so, come on lads, don't cheat, don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. Because you don't want to wake people up, not when you're nicking cars. Because you don't. Alright, no, so... Yeah. So, any, uh, is it late at night? Hold on, they weren't gay. They they what, what, they were, what, what, <laughs> they were out late, really. Come on, Carl, so what happened? So, anyway, so look, don't call me back, I'm going out of bed, <laughs> right? I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So, um... Let's go, what? So that go, was that, where right? Where are you working? Next thing, right, phone's going. Uh, hello, it's the police again. I said, oh, I told you not to call me. Right? <laughs> I told so, you not to so, call me at home. So, um, they said, right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? Just like, oh. So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, me underpants on. Yeah. Right? And the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them. They're shouting up, saying which road and all that. And I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. They, well, the, you know the I mean? blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't but they? this is just, don't get involved. Don't get involved. After Im that, I Imagine him being on a, some sort of trial where it's like, uh, some sort of mob. Affair. Yeah, gang Ima murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkington, listen. <laughs> Imagine that. Do you know what, the, do you know what wit witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when, supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia. Right, you've done a job for them and you have to give evidence against them, right? Cause all right, well, if you're gonna do, I mean, all I did was a two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with mafia. No, L listen. Of course not. No, but let's imagine. Imagine you're in the mafia and uh, that th you got caught doing something. But instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, "Oh well, I can I can give you Mr. Big." Yeah. So I go, "Okay, give us Mr. Big, and we'll let you off." Right. So the police go, "Right, okay." I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so, you say, you go, well, I'll give you names, they go, right, we'll get evidence in court, and you go, yeah. They go, right, we'll have to get your way, cos you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We'll give you a, a new identity, a new passport, we'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why, wh why have I got to do all that? Cos they'll because bump you off, won't they? They'll how did you know it was me? Because you have to give evidence in court. So they go, oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you got to change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, look, you just know no, you're giving them in to keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in some or sort or whatever. Does, how, how it, the, it doesn't matter, Carl. No. Listen. I'm, I'm just. How would the mafia know that I've said something? Because you say in court, those are the people. That's he's Mr. Big. He's Mr. So and So. He he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around, though, isn't it? But. So I've no, got to leave this job, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I think they might try XFM first. I'd have to, what, I'd, I'd have to bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she'd go and live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family, though. You can't contact them. You've got to leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what would the new identity be that you'd choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right? Brett so, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you gotta change your surname, yeah? Yeah. Bray, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go X directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen and, and go and live in, in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe, you know, and they're just, Forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair. Well, you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear maybe, a wig or yeah. a moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So, so, like an afro or something. Something like that. That yeah. would be brilliant. Yeah, that, that would be, be absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do all, all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing yes. and said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, why can't, why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court? <laughs> Say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, "Thanks very much." I go off. I carry on my life. That's I'm still genius. Coming in that on Saturday. I don't know why they haven't thought that. Of that is genius. I don't. That is all the witness protection. Scheme. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, "Well, I go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro, and I don't like that." Yeah. Right, and then when I come out, 
I'm back to Carl Pilkington. I'm still talking like that, <laughs> yeah. but without the afro. <laughs> that is what? perfect. Oh. You've got- Why don't you call the FBI and say, oh, listen, I can save you billions <laughs> of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. Right. I have a, a fascinating tale to tell you, Carl. I think you'll be intrigued. Um, when I do, um, junkets for films in, in America or, or uh, Toronto Film Festival, um, I was assigned a, a security and, uh, um, I've had security before. Often have security, they just sort of get you in and out of the car and usually just to control sort of autograph hunters and things and, but, um, this time I was given a, a security and he, he came in a, a suit, he looks about 30, he looked quite unassuming. I, I thought he was from a, just a security firm and there was a couple of them and, uh, first of all they were talking to each other and I thought, wow, the stakes are higher here. I don't know, I, I don't know why and, um, they drove us to the hotel and there was, uh, loads of people going to the hotel, I mean, m much bigger stars than me, you know, there was Ed Norton and, and George Clooney and they were going in and out and he goes, I, we can go past these and he called ahead. And he knew everyone. He just knew everyone. And we went down in the car park. We were met by another security guard in the hotel that let us go past everyone. I mean, Cl Clune is having to queue up and sign. And I'm thinking, this is weird. And I was feel a bit, a bit guilty because I was there to promote the film. And I think, this security guard's so good, I'm never going to ever have to pump into anyone. It was amazing. <laughs> and he was there the next day and he took us to the junket and back and he put us on the thing. And then it turned out that uh, he was actually... LAPD, who was doing this for celebrities because he earned more money. And then, um, I found out he had a gun. He said, I can't come in the airport with you. I can't take my gun. So he's armed. So I've got a security who's an LAPD who's, who's armed. And I'm fascinated. Now I'm fascinated. This man is walking around with me with a little earpiece, talking to everyone. He seems to know everyone and he's got a gun. I think oh, this is amazing. Then one night he said, uh, he dropped me off at the hotel and he said, uh, I've actually been called, I've got to go on a mission, they need my help. I said, really, what is it? He said, it's a hostage situation, he said, and I'm, I'm also SWAT. So now I'm just, this is amazing. He's now the, officially the coolest man I've ever met in my life. So he goes off. Then I'm thinking, oh, I'm worried about him. I was talking to Jane, I was thinking, wow, he does this, he gets this of cash, he's risking his life, and now he's going to a hostage situation. And I was thinking, oh God, it's, it's just, it's just a silent hero. Mm. So next day comes, I said, how was it? He said, I was fine. He said, I just turned up. He said, I had to, I had to do it in my suit. He said, uh, cause I'm the negotiator. What? So now, He's an armed security guard, he's an LAPD, he's special SWAT, and he's one of nine negotiators in LA. We're in LA now. We've come from mm. Toronto, went via New York and LA. So I went, oh my God. And I just asked him questions for mm. two hours. Um, so the first thing that happens is, so someone runs in with a hostage. This guy, is just a kid, he was 19, he'd done a robbery. He panicked and he'd run away. The police after him. He ran in and he took his his kid with him. It was just a, a three year old kid. Okay, um, that often happens. Uh, most hostages that people take are their family because it's all they've got, and they go, oh, "I'm going to kill my wife or my kid," and that. And they don't mean it. They're not going to, but they need they need a hostage. They've got a gun. So he talks to them and he's, he says things to them like, you, "You know, you didn't mean this to happen." Did you? They went, "No, no." I just did. he said they got out of hand. It just got out of hand, and he has to let them trust him because they, they've got a hatred for the police of course they don't trust the police now and um the first thing he does is call the phone company and say what's the number of this address he goes change it by one digit so now only he can call that number because of course you can't have a an engaged signal if they haven't got a phone they have to throw a phone through a window so they've got to have contact with this guy mm. uh, you know i said um what happens if uh, this guy says, uh, you're never going to get me out, I'm going to kill all the hostages? He said, then my sole purpose is to get him to stand near a window. And I went, wow. Now apparently, there's a police marksman ready, of course, if they think they've lost him. The important thing is you've got to take him out because you've got to protect the innocent. So how they shoot him is they shoot him in the top lip and it takes out the brain stem, so there's no reflex. And I'm just being absolutely, mm. I'm captivated. What do you think of that, Carl, as a job? It's amazing, isn't it? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, and once you've done one, though, it's like any job, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Once you've done one. Yeah, not boring, impressed. Boring, yeah. No, 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 it's good. Could you do uh, it? Do you reckon you could do it? Do you reckon you could negotiate someone out of a hostage situation? Well, I think in one of them tones? things, there's nothing you can do. It's like, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, because well, it you, does. you did your bit. No, it's like being a vet, isn't it? Not really. Not really, because well, that's well, ridiculous it's, thing no, to say. It's nothing, it's nothing like being like a vet. It's no, it is. What nothing. I mean is, you're you're expected to no, no, make no. a little kit and leave. No, no, no. There's loads of it. Because I was saying, so um, so he says, I need a car by five o'clock, mm. or I'm going to kill someone. He then makes sure that he doesn't kill anyone, but he makes sure that car doesn't come till quarter past five. Mm. Even if it's there. He keeps going, it's on its way, because then the hostage knows that he's not in control, really. Even if it's as easy as saying, I want my wife here, and he can get her there at five, oh, he makes sure she doesn't turn up till twenty past five. Yeah. It's just little things like that that's just absolutely fascinating. The psychology of it is just amazing. But he's not bothered, is he? He is bothered. minutes late. He is, because he, he really takes a bit, he empathises with these guys, and he says, no, you've got to understand. No, he but says, the fella in the house with the gun, yeah. he's not going anywhere. Fifteen minutes either side, doesn't matter. Well, why is he in a rush? I don't think Carl's getting out in four and a half minutes. You sure said, you said, yeah. they make the car fifteen minutes late. Yeah. He's getting his car. That yeah, bloke's not in a rush. He's never going to get in the car, is he? That's the other thing as well, because um, once a, a bloke said to him, um, I need a car, man. and he just went, where are you going to go? And the bloke went, uh, I'd, yeah, forget that. He has to make them forget their deadlines and their demands. So soon it doesn't matter. And he has to get in their head. But to do that, he says that he has to empathise with them to a certain extent. He has to understand why they're doing it, to talk to them and go, yeah, you've had a bad day. Mm. That, that would send anyone. But he has to get their trust. Carl, try and, t try and talk me out. You think it's that easy. Right, I've got a hostage situation, right? Done a crime. I've run in the building. They go, there's only one person we can ask for. Get me Carl Pilkington. Okay. You turn up. Right, what's your so question? So you've asked me, you've asked for me to deal with this? No, 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 no. The police know that you're their top man. There's a guy in here. He's got a gun. He's got a hostage. Okay. He's just done a crime. They don't know what to do. Okay. Right. You turn up. What's your first question to the... I'm talking to you. Well, no, you got to assess... Right, I'd say, I'd say, right, uh, I think there's a saying, actually, there's a, you say, where's brass, right? Right. I found that out, I heard that, I overheard that. What's that? It was something, uh... You're wasting time! It was Who's a... that bull cunt that's just turned up? I'm oh, gonna fucking listen, kill it! Right, where's but... brass? What does it mean? I heard it at school when they... I don't know what the fuck you're talking <laughs> about! God, just you... <laughs> it means, I heard, I heard someone use it on the... Well, I don't know what the fuck it means. It All means the top person of, right. of the police who are around at the moment. Yeah, well, you talked, I'm the fucking top brass here, I've got a fucking gun against this kid's head. Who the fuck are you, you bald little shithead? Where's my car? What car? I've asked for a car. Where's my fucking car? Am I talking to you now, am I? If are you, want, are, you the, are you the negotiator? Yeah. Right, get me a fucking car. Where do you want to go? Oh, I'm, I'm fucking sore for shouting. Throw a phone through the window so I can talk to you over the phone. No. All right, in a minute. Don't ever fucking say no to me. In a minute, I said. Okay. Right, the clock's going. Where's this fucking right, listen, phone? Listen, listen. I've got a sore throat. throat. I've listen. got a sore throat. I can't talk anymore with that phone. I've been, I've been called up here. I can't hear you. I need the I've phone. I've been called up here. Yeah, can you go to put the phone through? Why are you putting the phone through, you dopey cunt? You want to talk to him? Because I don't want to give you a phone straight away. You said you've got to delay him. No, but they, you've got to talk <laughs> to them. They shouldn't even demand a phone. You should make sure you've got a phone, you dopey twat. Give him a phone. Right, thanks. <laughs> All right, how's it going? That's better. All right. Uh, right. Who are you, by the way? Who are, who are you? Bruce. I can't, I can't give you them details. Well, you can, because I've got to trust you, dopey sod. Are you police, or just some fucking cunt walking by? I'm a policeman. Right, I don't trust policemen. No, but I'm a bit higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Oh, don't you tell me I'm laying down the law here. No, listen. I'm going to shoot someone unless I get a fast car. I've done a robbery. It's all gone wrong. You're after me now, but I want a car to the airport or on a plane standing by. You don't know me, but I do this a lot. Right? And I can tell you that it never works out right. Do you know anyone who's done what you're doing? And he's now living a happy life. Well, I don't care. I don't care about living anyway. 
I don't care about living now. I don't care if this goes wrong because I'm going to shoot the hostage. What's your problem? I'll oh, just. <laughs> 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 I think you've got the wrong attitude, mate. I think you've got the wrong attitude here. No, but this is. Th th to be honest with you, this was my last week. <laughs> <laughs> what, why are you sending him that? Because I want to bring him down to my level. Right. What's that got to do with it? Well, you know, I've done this job for a long time. Right. And sometimes I felt like you. I've right. been, you know, even though I'm on this side, mm. you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I've had enough of this. Right, well, I have had enough, but I I'll tell you, I don't care about living or dying here, so if I don't get a car to the airport, all bets are off. I'm killing everyone and then myself, so you're, you're, you'll be a big loser. You will be a big loser, son. There you go, I'll give you the clue now, Carl. He doesn't care about getting away with it. Now you've got to get him to stand near a window. You've got to, you've got to take him out. Because I've got a gun to someone's head. You can't burst in, right? You've got, what, come on, how do you get him to stand near a window? Oh, I bet you're hot in there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going? Uh, I, I am. Going? I am hot, yeah. That's why I've just drawn the curtains and keep away from the window because the sun's blazing in. It's, 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 it's not too bad away from the window. It's, uh, the sun's gone round the back now. Just come and have a look. It's a lovely, lovely evening. Why do you want me to stand near a window? I think just because when you see how nice an evening it is. <laughs> <laughs> Worst, worst load of drivel ever. <laughs> <laughs> you how, keep going, I'm oh, interested. When you see how lovely no, when you, it's, it's that thing, I've heard, I've heard that if you smile, you, you, you feel better. So have a little smile. Think what? of a happy moment in your life. <laughs> I'll tell you what a happy moment in my life would be. Putting a bullet through your little round head, you cunt. Keep thinking about that image. Right. And you can see that round head. Just come to the window, I'll show you the round head. That would probably work, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What? No, I'm not going to come near the window. You come near the window. You come near the, my window. I'd be come. Are you coming near the window? No, not yet. What? Delaying it again. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm coming near the window. Well, I'm going to shoot you if you come near the window. You dopey prat. Well, why? I thought we were getting somewhere here. No, I'm going to shoot you. I've conned you. I've, I've negotiated you to come near the window, and I'm going to shoot you in the head, you prat. Uh, I'll just leave then. <laughs> now, I, I don't agree with execution. State execution of someone, whatever they've done, for many reasons. But the main one is, I don't think you can have a state that shows that sort of violence against an individual, whatever they've done, and expect people to accept the very code and morality of treating people equally and not showing violence towards them. Carl, where do you stand on the tricky issue of capital punishment? You've given it some serious thought, I imagine. Um, so what, you're asking me, like, should he be, should he, should he be on death row? Well, should, should someone flip the switch, send him to his death in the electric chair? Um, yeah. <laughs> That was the, that was the that. least considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I saw a little bit of flicker behind the eyes. I don't know what. Well, just take us through the mental process that you that you arrived at the yes with there. So you you know I remember because there was a, quite a brief gap there. I just was thinking, it's not a nice job if you work in there and you got to flick the switch. Right. But I was wondering if if it's possible to just do it so it's linked up to someone's switch. <laughs> What do you mean? When they put the lights on or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sometime tonight when the sun goes down and people start putting the lights on in their house, it could happen. But we don't know what household, they might be away on holiday. So you might get an extra two weeks. <laughs> but at least that way. Because for me, well, the worst, well, the worst... Well, you say that? This is not... The question I asked was whether... We were talking about the morality of whether you put someone to death. But he was thinking about... He was the, thinking the, about literally the practicality of flipping the switch. Well, no, I think that you're... Aren't you talking about the integrity of the person who n knows or knows not that they've put someone to death? Like a firing squad. Like yeah. the, what they used to do sometimes yeah. in the First World War when some, they, had, they had six riflemen, but Only five were bullet. blanks and one right. had a... And no one knew... If they were the person that killed them. Yeah. So, but what my point is, you do agree that someone should be put to death for a terrible crime, do you? You've got to have something there to stop them people who, who don't care, haven't you? Nature's done it in a way, with bees. They've gone, we've give you a weapon, 
But if you use it, you die. And that's like the bee. Well, so yeah. they're worried they're going to go, oh, I'm not going to do we it. We do, won't we? We have, we have people saying, one, you can't do that. That's, that's step one. Here's the law. Don't yeah, do it. But there's a lot of people Two. who go, I'm not bothered about the law. I'm not bothered about annoying people. Yeah, that's so true. So for them, at the end of the scale, you've got the chair and you stick the wires on their head and we'll fry your head. <laughs> and they go, oh God, I don't want that. That, 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 that doesn't always work, does it, with, with being put to death? Because de as a deterrent, uh, most of the crimes aren't just crimes of gain with that. Some of them are crimes of passion with, where a deterrent doesn't count because you see red and you, you go crazy and you're angry and you kill someone. Uh, I, I think a lot of those crimes the deterrent isn't relevant you know things like armed robbery maybe where it's a risk what can i get versus what my crime maybe maybe then it might be a deterrent but then of course if you start to get a capital punishment for crimes that aren't murdering someone then th that thing brings in you might as well murder them but because then you've got more chance of getting away with it so it's very delicate what you make people be killed for um, you've made a, an interesting and reasoned argument there rick i'm looking forward to, to hearing the riposte right when I was younger, I used to nick Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Now, I did that then, and, uh, and I knew that even if I get caught, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. It's not going to, I'm not going to go to prison over that. But it was worth nicking because the Mars bar, they were like 45 pence. Sure. When you're a kid, you can get a lot of chewing nuts for that. Chewing nuts? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they like caramel covered in chocolate. Last ages. Quite hard. Oh, I know. Yeah, you suck the chocolate off and then you've got to chew Horrible. them until they're... Yeah, I know, yeah. Now, I could afford them at ten pence a bag. They're, they'd last me sort of a morning. Um, a Mars bar was a proper treat. Mm. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of yeah. chocolate, a lot of caramel. Yeah. Like, for, like say, 45 pence. Yeah. So, to so me... That was, that was like an advert that went wrong just at the end. <laughs> they started off good. They go, this fly's good. He's, uh, you go there. Mars bar, there's a lot in it. It's like, oh, good, keep going. Yeah, it's got, it's got caramel. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's 45 pence, which is too fucking much, so fucking nick it, you're gone. <laughs> but when I was younger, that was worth a risk because I knew that I'd be getting something worth 45 pence yeah, for free. You weren't going to get the electric And I wasn't going to get done. Mm. So the stakes were high, the risk were low. No, wait, 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 wait. You mean the stakes were high, the risk were low? <laughs> I think he's just trying to sound cool. The stakes weren't high. The stakes are what can happen to you and the risk. The stakes and the risk are the same. The risk is the stake, okay? Uh, yeah, unless you're nicking meat from a butcher's, then the, the stakes are high and the risk is low. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but what you meant was it the was game the was high. The game the, was high. Yeah. The game was high. Yeah, the risk was low. Yeah. But it's not, wasn't, it wasn't, was it? Because 45p isn't a lot unless you're it a kid. It is when you're a kid. It is really a kid. Because I was getting 50 But they're surely pence. getting caught for nicking a Mars bar's higher when you're a kid. No, it's not, look. You see, most of the time, I didn't want to say which shop it was that I nicked it from, but it's where I did my paper round. Now, the thing is... <gasps> so you're nicking from your own boss? Nah, but listen, I used to oh, wake him up. that I is him terrible. Run. No, because I... That is terrible. This is awful. That Go is, on, hang on, I want to hear... That is really No, I want to hear him rationalise his, his terrible Because that sweet crime. old man who used to give... He's <laughs> not an old man. I used to go around sweet and wake him up, man. right? He yeah. hated running that place. Right. Uh, if anything, I'd say I was his best asset. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know he was what... nicking from him. He was yeah, nicking I, from him. I don't know how business. much he made on papers, but he'd probably go 45p profit. Hold on. I, they got their papers really early because I, I got up early. Yeah. I used to go around to the well, shop. Well, you know, a day four. helps you work, rest and steal. So, <laughs> so I used to go around there, wake him up. He'd be like, what are you doing around here so early? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, I'm just hungry. What? I'm just, I'm just hungry for work. No. Oh, well, good, well, good boy. Pip. I'm just going to turn away a minute yeah, um, yeah. while you stand there in front of the confectionery. Um, mm. I'll turn away now and I'm looking back now and here's the papers. And yeah. thanks so much, Carl, because you, you're a lovely He's kid. like an honourable and trustworthy guy. Yeah, I can't guy. really afford to... I've uh, been betrayed so many times, that's why yeah. my lovely wife's no longer with me. You know, she ran off with Ken. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, at least I've got a friend. At least I've got you, one young friend. You turn friend. up early, you're... Oh, God, it, it's brilliant. Oh, and Carl, keep a look out. Cause, um, Someone's been nicking Mars bars. Yeah, I know, I, know it's, I know it's not you, because I trust you implicitly. And, uh, and, uh, and by the way, Carl, why don't you take a Mars bar for free? Oh, thanks. Well, that never happened. All right. So, I'm getting 50 pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. Right. Now, if I, if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar, yeah. 5p profit a day is not worth it. No. So, help yourself. 
I knew I was doing a no, good no, job no, for you. No, 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 no have a little bit of uranium. <laughs> a lovely little bit of uranium. Yeah, yeah. That'd do. That'd do. <laughs> That's a strange analogy, Rick. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. So he works in a power plant, he's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing with the uranium? Wow. You know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so's uranium. God. Uh, what do you make of uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, mm. uh, and he was asleep, or something, oh, yeah. and people were, like, outraged because, like, he, he should be looking after, you know, England's people, not nodding off on a, on a park bench. Which is a bit daft because they were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, is that? Looking so after was, this the, hey, was this the 16th century you went back to? What do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in yeah. like a park somewhere, they yeah, were, like they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure, he'd probably about, undercover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah, if there was any sort of if someone needed help mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah. And, and he might not, he might not have been there at all. So you know, it was you know, so yeah. he would probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going I think up. There's enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, okay. you're happy then. Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. Now, if you think about America in the 1950s, black people still very much second-class citizens. You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident, in which. Um, she was obliged mm. to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it. Became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, and am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah. You <laughs> 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 so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops, you live further away than Rosa does because you've got a lovely big house where she doesn't have a lovely place, she can't afford it. So you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this now, you've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you, maybe you've got on that bus as a privileged white man and she refuses to get up on your behalf. Uh... I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. But why would you say that? Because you're thinking of the modern day car, you're not thinking of the man from the 1950s. Well, we where don't, it's well, the thing is, well, we don't have to, we don't have to go back in time. Or, uh, we can go to a country now where you'd see an injustice, where you were outnumbered by the law of the land. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say, uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the to the shopping centre. we only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Because there's no one sat next to you down there. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes <laughs> than the bus. I'll see you in a minute. It's not a big issue. I've done it on the train. Where I've booked tickets and they've ended up being different tickets. And I've gone, oh, I'll see you in an hour and a half. I've got an iPod. But it's, so you went first class and but she that's, was but in, that's, in But the that's luck. That's, that's luck. That's circumstance. One is, one is policy. Surely you can see the difference between a principle and a bit of luck. Uh, but it's what you get used to at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not walking past them slapping them on the back of the head. I'm getting on and it's just that's where they sit, that's where we sit. Like men and women sit, going into a separate toilet. Carl, let's put this to, to, I mean, obviously this is too much for your head to, you're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people and they're- And the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go, if I'm driving, I'd go, lads, stop that, will you? If you're gonna be racist, can you get off at the next stop and do well, it there? Well, you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day, it's the end of the day, we just all wanna go home. We've all been working. Right. Uh, he's not in your way, he's sat in his own seat, sit back, calm down. Had enough. But, but what if they said, no, we want, we usually sit there, we want that seat. 
Would you think he's a black kid's a troublemaker? Or just, you, would you go, come on, just move, mate. It'd be peaceful. I'd, I'd go, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to move so this is calmed down? Or no, do no, you no, want no, 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 you shouldn't say that. He doesn't, he, he doesn't matter if he wants to move or not. It's his right, right. not to move. Uh, do what you want, then. If you want to stay there and fight your own no, no, corner. No, 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 no. He again. wants to stay there. Don't you have, surely you come, surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here. I'm getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right? No, but that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But yes, but Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, he, no, no, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying well, about you know Rosie, story Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. <laughs> how did it work? I'll she sat on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. The middle section of the bus, uh, what, black people could sit there, but it was uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit, depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well, no, actually, this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Right. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up. It's my right to be able to sit on this bus as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. Well, she lost in the end, didn't she? What do you mean she lost in the end? There's a black president. Yeah, but it's not because of her getting on a bus. That's Ooh. just because times change. Yes, in a way well, it is. I don't know. Because it she is. became a spearhead of the civil rights movement that was we spearheaded had by d Martin Luther King. But All those little things go towards change. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, I've, I, who's, who's been in a right mood, might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. So she's pissed up there. She's pissed up there. No, no, no. no the person the sat next to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke. He's been working hard. And he's like, I don't want this. But it's interesting you say the that. The bus pulls over, the Be police are called in. But you say, this, it's interesting you say that, because in the, in the Rosa Parks incident, there were a number of other black men, all of whom did stand up. I think five of them were there, and four of them stood up, and she stayed sat down. So there was four people there who did choose the easier route, the easier life, and she stayed sat down, and she's the one who went to prison, and she's the one who's remembered, because of what she did on that day. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up, you know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause, or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now that's fine. You'll always get people who do what they want and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to, she was fed up that day. She didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law breaking all the time and she's remembered now because she's she's made a change about bus seats but when she got up that morning did she say i'm going to do that or has she been fly tipping before she got on the bus <laughs> this is what i'm saying is she just is she just a, a no, you know a, no she's not a troublemaker she's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's, I, yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's oh. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't realise I had to, I didn't realise it would be this difficult. I'll tell you what is annoying. What? Steve's told me about a film that is about a monkey going off with a woman. Mm. The Charlotte Rampling thing where she It's a film takes... called Max Monomour. Yeah, she has an affair with a monkey. Go on. Yeah. Oh, what happened? You wouldn't like don't it. Don't go, we can't go into You wouldn't like monkeys. it. You wouldn't like it. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's weird and you wouldn't, do, Carl, it's not like a nature program where he wears a bowler hat and can talk. Okay. The nature programs that you <laughs> seem to see. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to think I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do monkey news. Well, monkey news this week. Play the um, Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you f- Right, it's about this monkey that was knocking about in the 1950s. Right. Um, just, uh, it was known in the sort of <laughs> LA area, right? Um, and apparently, um, again, I haven't really checked all this out, I've just picked up bits that, that look are. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, wore a golden mask and like a cape and a, a leopard skin belt and stuff, right? So people didn't know 
But he, he was, was a monkey. monkey. Of course they didn't know, yeah. He just thought, they thought he was this bloke who's going around and he was helping out crime situations and stuff. <laughs> right, you're an idiot. So, one, this disguise, that, that you see a, a, a three foot six bloke with arms the length of his body. No, well that's the funny thing, right? They knew, they sort of thought, it's a bit odd, you know, he's stocky, yet extremely flexible. Yeah, and hairy, because he only wore a mask and a belt. And a distinctive jawline and stuff. And then, uh, right. apparently, like, he used to sort of get to his... Nothing we say gets through, does it? You've, you've, you've decided you can picture this monkey going around solving going crimes, and it's... Telling you. Let him finish the story. Time's running Jeez. out. So it sort of get to its crime by, like, swinging from the trees and stuff. Of course stuff, it would, right? yeah. Well, people just thought, it's a normal fella. Of course. Then what happened was, he... This is the bit that's gonna annoy me, isn't it? He helped some fellas out, like, you know, and for a, re for a reward, they were like, do you want some money? You know, you've, you've helped save our lives during a crime and stuff. Mm. Do you want some money in that? And he just went straight for the shopping bags, got a couple of bananas and apples, <laughs> right? And as he was bent down, looking into the bag, getting the bananas and apples, they pulled his mask off, little monkey. So he wasn't allowed to work for the police anymore? It, it ended there. Sure. Weird, isn't it? <sighs> Rick, can I tell you the meaning of One Play the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. Can we never speak of monkey news again? Yeah. Well, anyway, today's, today's story, uh, is emailed in. Uh... So you didn't even do anything towards it? <laughs> well, so when you say I've been working on monkey news, what, you, you printed that out? So is the making of monkey news you checking your email? Well, Brilliant. no, I'm always looking at different options at, you know, how much is going on. This yeah. is what makes me laugh when he says he's, he's really busy. Yeah. I'm doing other stuff and that. I'm doing other yeah. stuff. People are sending in monkey news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get an email. I Is it from it Reuters? Out. Well, listen, it's from Steve. Okay. Right? Uh, now what it is, is this monkey, right? Yeah. Don't know where it was. Mm hmm Uh, but there's a bit before the monkey anyway, right? Jeez. It, is this- no, listen. Shoot me. Right? It's a bank. There's this bank, right? Busy bank. Normal yeah. day, everything's going normal, yeah. right? Busy bank, people going in. Doing what they do, seeing about mortgages and stuff. Yep. yep. Everything's normal, everyone's yep. happy, right? Yep. So anyway, it's quite busy one day. Fella comes in with a gun and a balaclava on. Oof. Up to no good. Right, I'll tell you now, Carl. If this fella turns out to be any ape or monkey related species, you're never doing this again. <laughs> you, you are never. Uh, so, so just, if you want to finish it, it's at your own risk. But if this fella who robbed the bank. Turns out to be a chimpanzee. <laughs> that's the end of monkey news. All right. Okay. Let's right. hear the end. It's a it's a lovely day in a lovely bank. Everyone's happy. Everything's normal. A um, man comes in in the balaclava. Man comes in. Starts, Is it a man? Starts waving a gun around. <laughs> Shut up, Rick. Let me let him finish the story. Starts waving a gun around. Yeah. Right. Up to no good. So everyone's thinking, oh God, you know, wish you didn't come in here. It's not going to be a good day. How tall is the man? Shut up. Let's hear it. Uh, everything, you know, oh god, and he's telling everyone to get down on the floor. Yep. Everyone's hey, what, thinking, in English? Shh. In English? Yeah. In English? So. Yeah. So everyone's panicking, everyone's getting on the floor thinking this is it, this is, you know, it's all over. Yeah. Just when you think, you know, it could it's all bad news, yeah. it's all bad news, doors swing open, little monkey wanders oh, in. Oh god, it's worse. Shut up, Rick. Little monkey wanders <laughs> in, right? The robber's like, what's going on here? <laughs> He's yeah. telling it to get down on the floor, I don't think it was taking any notice. No, right? it was just busy asking for coffee. It runs in, I don't know if it was kind of withdrawal or, or deposit or whatever, <laughs> it <laughs> wanders in, right? Uh, go, goes up to the robber. Where did it- where did it come from? Shut up, will you let him finish the story and then ask questions, that's okay. only fair. Okay, okay. Wanders in, uh, runs up to the fellow with the gun, takes the gun and the bag of money off him. Everyone's like, yay, you know, we've been saved. Then the monkey starts backing out with the gun and the money. <laughs> Shut up! Don't you, like, sit down, sit down no, and finish. I'm, I'm not having this. And it, does, it, does, story. it does a runner with the with the money and the gun. No one's seen it since. You are an idiot. I mean, you are. You have said some stupid things in your time. What are you talking about? It's a story that happened. No. What are you talking about? What do you mean it backed out? It came in, whether- was it as an accomplice? Was it an opportunist monkey <laughs> robbery? What are you talking- think, Carl! Think! I know it's mad, that's- that's the idea of monkey news. We're telling people how- how like- how monkeys are, are pretty, you know, they're mental. Yeah, <laughs> they're up to no good. What are you- think? They've never seen the monkey since. What, did he have a get- getaway car waiting? Did he swing his way to freedom? 
Where was this? There's no details. Don't talk rubbish. Okay. Well, uh, Steve, Steve emailed it in. He's got it off the net. And the funny oh, okay. thing is, Can the I see funny it? thing is, the yeah, the funny thing is, um, it, it wasn't just him who sent it. I had that a couple of times. So a few people obviously read the story and said, you know, that'll be good for Monkey News. It doesn't say anymore. It doesn't say if he went off to Spain. It doesn't say, you know, what, you know, if he's on Crime Watch. Yeah. It doesn't say any of that. It's just saying that's what he did. That's the story. And that's what Monkey News is about. I've heard that they're making a movie version with Phil Collins. <laughs> 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 so I look forward to that and Judy Waters. So that's, that's this week's Monkey News. If you've got any, you know, well, if anything's no, happening in, in your town. Well, no, don't bother. That's the end. No, that is the end. That's the end of Monkey News. No more Monkey News. All right? Um... Right, before I went away, I told you about Alfred. Um, he was the- he was the monkey where there was a, a robbery going on in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he nicked the robber's loot and backed out yeah. with a gun. Yeah, he sort of stole- he, he robbed the robber, didn't he? Yeah. Did he take his gun as well? He Did took he the weapons, he took all the weapons, there was like a couple of robbers. He managed- because they were so amazed that a monkey was coming in, it was like- Don't what? talk shite twice. Right. Anyway. So anyway. Got a follow-up to that. Okay. Now, what was that, that monkey's name? Um, Alfred. That was Alfred. Um, so anyway, um, because a lot of people wanted to know, well, you know, what did he do? Did he go off and have a holiday? Did he, no, no, no. So, um, so the follow-up is, what happened is, the monkey had the guns, had the cash, which was $250,000. Sure. Right? It went back to the zoo, right? Uh, you, uh, right, Carl, you're talking shit. Well, you, Ricky, oh. I get angry with you when you won't let oh. him finish his monkey news. Right. Can't we just get out of the official? Imagine thing. if people were interrupting Trevor McDonald. I don't. It wouldn't happen. I don't want. I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. No, of course not. Um, no, so, so yeah. check the internet. So uh, the monkey goes back to the zoo, right, where all the zookeepers come out and go get him. He's, he's got the guns. Yeah. He hands out a couple of guns to his mates. What? Right. His monkey mates? His monkey mates. So they've all got a couple of guns each. Oh, Carl. Uh, Steve, I can't, mate. I cannot <laughs> Just stand it. Little Honestly, little... I want to f scream. Please, I really get annoyed with you. They tried to do him a, do him a deal. They said, how about if- uh, I'm going. Tell him that. I'm right. not going. Now I can't- Step out for a moment. Okay, we'll just do it. Look, don't ridiculous. listen. Step out and I'll paraphrase what, what I hear for you when you come back in. Step out. Now, please. I need to hear- I need to hear the end of this. Now, this yeah. is monkey news. This is important stuff. <laughs> Right. Right, Ricky now has left the room. He cannot- he cannot bear to hear, which is surprising to me. Right, so anyway, um, so yeah, they've got the money, and mm. they say to the zookeepers, how about, uh, we give you some cash? Yes. And they go- oh. Sorry, the, well, hang on, sorry, the zookeeper said that to the monkeys? Yeah. Right. No, 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 the monkeys who have got the £250,000- Right. Say to the zookeepers, we'll sort you some money out if you let us go. So right. the monkeys say to the zookeepers, We'll give you some money. Yeah. You don't see any problem with that? Right, listen. Okay. Let, it's nearly finished. <laughs> right, I'm listening out there. You could, this is ridiculous. You go! What do you mean the monkeys say? What do you mean the monkeys say to the zookeeper? They were probably holding the money out, like, kind of going, look, you know, we'll do your deal. Right, okay, come on. Um, and what happened is, I think, uh, I think that, I think they were happy with that. I think they left and that was that. They, they, they wanted to get out of the zoo because they didn't like it in there. There's the thing. Right, I, I don't- uh, Just have a look. Right, Carl, think. Right, how did they get out in the first place, this one? Just let Steve have a- So why did he go- so he went and robbed- he thought- uh, what, he knew there was gonna be a robbery that day, did he? He might have been getting some money before they went to escape and then that happened and they had more money. They might have been withdrawing some stuff out. What do you mean? If no- If he was planning on leaving the zoo, he's gonna get his savings. What are you talking about? What have you read there, Steve? I, I've got a, I've got a feeling this is a review of one of the Planet of the Apes films. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I'm not certain. It could be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Right. What I mean, Carl, think, think, please think. Right. So this this monkey, right? He leaves the zoo, right? He, so he leaves the zoo, which he can do presumably. What they leave him the keys or what? They're chatting to him. They might as well. He goes to a bank. What, what's he, what's he thinking of doing? Sees a robbery, probably by chance. He probably wasn't tipped off, was he? Or has he got one of those police scanners? Probably got one of those police scanners. Well, I think he was going to the bank to get a mortgage to, uh, build a, a <laughs> slightly, uh, I think he wanted an extension, didn't he, on his, uh, cage? 
think of that. And so, he, I love the fact that he hands out the guns and they do a deal. <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, <laughs> you've got the best, you've got the best mind working on radio today. It's incredible. There's a monkey in India, right? On a, uh, railway station, waiting for the train. <laughs> No, don't mess it out because I've got to get through it quick. <laughs> There's monkeys, monkeys sat there, and uh, this robber nicks somebody's handbag or something. <laughs> goes running off down the platform. The police are chasing him. Monkey steps in, trips the fella up, pins him down. Police come and arrest the fella. He tripped over the monkey. Okay, play a record. He didn't. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. A particularly aggressive jingle this week. Wow. Yeah, looking forward to this monkey news. <laughs> Carl. Right. Come on. So, what's the name? What? We've done. <laughs> <the> <laughs> Sorry, what, what? What? Brilliant. We've done, uh. We've done a lot of monkeys who, like, got involved in crime and stuff. Mm, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. We had, uh. The one on the train station. Yeah. Nick in a bag. Yeah. We had the one who went Don't into a that bank. One. Who cares? Went into <laughs> a bank. <laughs> and walked out with the money and stuff. Yes. Right? Didn't happen either. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, you never sort of found out what happened to them. If they sort of got worse, got more involved into oh, crime and stuff. Oh, this monkey news update! <laughs> that would uh, be amazing. Brilliant. What they found out in India is... Yeah. They've got a prison. It's okay. just for monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean wild animals? You mean... A they, zoo? Yeah, yeah. A zoo or a kennel or no. something that where they've... they've it's been uh, gone mental or no, something. No, it's a prison. Yeah. A prison. Is it, is it, does it have fraud cases? It's got- it's I mainly- bet, uh, mainly sort of animals that are attacked things, and it's mainly violence, I bet. That's my- That and- uh, that and theft. Say it again? Stuff. Theft. <laughs> Say it again? Theft. Say it again? Robin. Uh, no, let's go back to the, 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 that word. We're gonna keep doing it. You've got- we've got Robin. six minutes. You're gonna say the word right before you go to Hastings. Well, do you say it? No, well, you no, say it then you know how to say it. Well, alright, Robin then. It's been caught Robin. Say it again though. So Who's anyway. Robin? Who's Robin? So, uh, they've got this prison, <laughs> right? This is extraordinary. <laughs> say it again. No, you're not gonna say it? No, go on then. So they got a prison for them, right? And, uh, there's eleven of them in there, eleven monkeys. Right. That are in there for life. <laughs> Cos <laughs> that's- the, 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 I think there's one just got out on parole. Right. No right. time off for the There's eleven. There's eleven. I'll give you the better paper because I thought this was. <laughs> weird. Now Even what? You, th you thought it was a bit weird. Now, Carl, what uh, what are they in there for then? Because I mean, they're in there for life, so I'm Robin, assuming it's murder, Robin, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Premeditated murder. <laughs> they're not. They're not crime bosses, are they? They're not. Are not they? The, are they the prostitution uh, and gambling? Are you sure they're theory? not? They're just the pawns and the and the head sort of like orangutans up a tree, going. Remember, you don't know me. You're on your own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I go down, you're all yeah. coming with me. You take some of your gorillas down there and sort him out. Oh, the great banana robbery. <laughs> it's I not. Wonder if, I wonder if they get them. <laughs> right, go on then. Okay, let me see. Now, where, I don't know what source this is, as ever. <laughs> is it just as ever <laughs> the back of a fag packet found in the toilet? Well, no, I mean, someone's clearly- if, if this is nonsense, then someone's clearly gone to a lot of effort because it does open with the headline, Parole unlikely for inmates of monkey prison. <laughs> Officials say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail. Officials? Now what kind of people work <laughs> at a monkey jail? Ah, Where do you work? Ah, um, uh, it says officials say 11 inmates at India's only monkey jail are unlikely to ever be released. Uh, the prison in Patilia houses monkeys apprehended by game wardens in Punjab state for thieving and attacking people. Uh, the, Daily, uh, the Daily Telegraph reports how the monkeys at the prison in Monty Bar, blah, 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 snarl and glare at visitors from their heavily barred cages. Two monkeys were released a year ago after exhibiting good behaviour for 18 months in the jail. They have remained out of trouble. Prison can work, that's good. So, so All basically, monkeys, they were aggressive wild animals that were taken away from the public for their own good. I'm robbing them that. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife officials believe part of the problem has been caused by thieves training monkeys to help them. Lorry drivers training monkeys as guards for vehicles and itinerant entertainers oh, using ill-treated so monkeys as and part it's of the, their act. It's the monkey that takes the rap. It's a shame, that isn't that it? That is awful. They didn't know what they were doing, did they? Oh, so there you go. What do you think of that though, Carl? What would you- what would, if you- if you could visit them, like Lord Longford, 
or something, what would you, what would you say to them? You go there and they, you, they, you get a visit a week or something, you know. So can you get us a video? Alright. <laughs> 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 right. Do they get, uh, conjugal rights? Do you reckon? You wouldn't be interested in that though, would you? What's, they get what? <laughs> w would you be happy to give them their conjugal rights? Yeah, would you? Fair enough. Alright. Off to Hastings. <laughs> Off you go. Later. Society is one vast conspiracy for carving one into a kind of statue it likes and then placing it in the most convenient niche it has. So one saying, no, this is why we're moral people. The society is great for us. It, it turns us into responsible people, okay? And we, we should love that society and make sure it's perpetuated. But Bourne said, no, no, it's just a way to mould someone into what it likes and put it into a little box so it can't hurt anyone. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's not, again, it's... <laughs> no, bo both, of them, both of them are right. Both of them are right, but they're contradictory. They're both opinions. Um, they're, certainly, they're certainly opinions. But you, uh, I mean, I, I don't know why I am the way I am. <laughs> it just happens, doesn't it? Uh, you know, I don't like killing a fly. No one would stop me if I did. But there's something in me. That goes, don't do that. Right, so this is a very important theory because you're basically saying, well, you could be saying one of two things. You could be saying that goodness is innate. Not likely. No. <laughs> or he could be saying that um, there's a morality that transcends rules and society pressure. Whether or something's legal or not doesn't mean that you have to do it because it's legal. And That's it doesn't what mean I meant. You don't, yeah? yeah? Is that the one you meant? That's what I meant. Um, there was a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between, uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw Are you going to extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's see, let's see, let's okay, see. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So there's a wasp, yeah, well, so, um, look at scenario, wasp, scenario, wasp, right? wasp, wasp, as you, as you right. said, sorry, right. just to clarify, as you said, it was kicking off. No, right, okay. scenario. So you're looking I'm out there. your window. No, right. I'm, I'm in the kitchen, by right. the sink. Yeah. Uh, washing up, we've got a new sink. We've mm. got a dishwasher as well, but I said, well, I'll use the sink, we've paid for it, let's yeah. give it a go. So you're like a Luddite, threatened by the technology. You're thinking your worth will be taken away, your reason... Uh, uh, in the world will be taken away by the dishwasher. So like, no, bit. Suzanne, we've got a dishwasher, but I am going to carry on. You're going to need me. I want to show I'm needed. I want to use it. It's like I don't understand it if someone's got a really nice car but they have a chauffeur. Drive it. It's yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy your car. Well, I feel use a, a gear car. change. Yeah, but you don't drive. No, I know. Yeah, so that's all right. But what I'm saying is, I've got a sink. I've got a dishwasher. What am I doing? If I put the dishwasher on, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit down and do nothing. Probably. Wash up then. Do something useful. I do a better job than the machine does. Well, so get rid of the machine altogether then? No, because Why? sometimes I might want to go for a walk or something. Well, why don't you go for a walk all the time? It's good for you. I'd had a walk in the morning. Anyway, so I'm washing well, up. That was all the prelude to the wasp and the crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> it better be fucking good to top that. <laughs> His life's so complicated. For a man who does nothing at all, Right? His, wife, his life is so complicated. No, because it's the same thing. The kitchen's failing you. All right, so you're I washing up for okay, Christ's right. You're using a, a new sink. The dishwasher's there. It's not doing anything. It's not even plugged in. It's no. pointless. What's going on? I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, oh my God, look at that. What? There's a, like a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it before. Right. Wait, right. wait, wait! Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually <laughs> was a sporting event? Two people event. dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they're there wrestling, and I was like, "Well, stop them then." So stop she... it. Whoa, 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 whoa! You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering <laughs> with a wasp in a cricket? Because one, I didn't even know they didn't get on. To be honest. <laughs> So this is much bigger metaphor than black no, and because, white. Because listen, this is more important than apartheid and segregation. Because thing. I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> because I've, I've, they they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. That I, I always overdo not. it with the fairy liquid. Yeah, sure. So she's she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> Poor Suzanne. Now, so she uses a tea towel, flicks and flick. Clever, right. good right. thinking. The the wasp goes its own way. The cricket sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting who? So I'm sort of saying that is really weird because wasps 
are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. Okay, well that's just your theory and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back I saw one eating chicken. We shouldn't right. be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we ate wasps, we ate their stripes. We ate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, subsequent information's oh, come okay. through. Sorry. Okay, so anyway, like Columbo, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not! Definitely not! It was shaking a little bit. Yeah. So I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it because it was a hot day. I'll put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated. I love I'll this. Like it's it. done the marathon. It's got a little, <laughs> it's got Mars on the leaf, written so, on the leaf, and now it's just walking over the little medal. So Suzanne, we, you know, we I leave it for a bit. Leave it. On. What about did you half say? An hour, about, about, about left it for half an hour. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? She wanted. What did she want to do? Just sort of like. Yeah, um, she just sort of said, "Leave it. Stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned." Sure, let's right. get on with our lives. She said. Yeah. So, <laughs> I put the leaf on it. You're putting too much fairy liquid. Why don't we use the dishwasher? <laughs> we go. Cost us four hundred quid. You dirty bald cunt. So we go off, and half an hour later, I get back in. I'm going to. I said, I'm going to go and see the. Where'd cricket. you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. But hold on. Why did you put, put the dish in the dishwasher and go for a walk? I don't understand. So now you're because so, so now as a dishwasher sitting there bone idle, you're washing up when you could be walking, and then you're still. Well, it's walking. a good job I didn't go for a walk though, wasn't it? Because what? How would that have turned out? That fight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there would have just been a so pool anyway, of blood on your back door. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Don't know if the wasp did that or the tea towel flick, or it was already disabled, and that's why the. Wasp thought this is an easy one. What if the wasp was helping it? It wasn't, no, honestly. But what it if was, going, it was excuse such me, a wasp? Because we, we're such friends and humans don't understand us, and anyone interfered we definitely don't understand us, right? He's not an entomologist. Right? Well, this is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. And it's a, uh, what was it called? Brilliant. Oh, I can't remember. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot, <laughs> and it stings them in the head. Right, not this particular. There wasn't a little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a kind of it's just, it's just an incident that happens a lot happens between wasp, uh, yeah. wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, mm. and what happens is it's that whole thing that we've talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head, uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like oh I can't I can't handle this. So what do you mean, moving its one leg? It was sort of just moving its one leg quite slowly, like it's just come out got from one an operation. Leg. It's lost one leg, you said? Yeah, it's lost one. Yeah, it's moving five legs slowly. No, it's just it's one big one. It's got one big leg? One big leg, <laughs> at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. Oh, I see, so, uh, okay. So it's now right. it's only got one, it's sort of like, oh, it looks groggy. Is it not a grasshopper if it's jump? is it not a, what colour was it? Is it like... Sort of, uh, beige. Oh, it's probably a cricket, yeah. So, um, so anyway. It's important. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? You did a bit of leafleting amongst the cricket in community? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he Oof. said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round, they don't have an egg put in their head. There's no way it said well, that. Well, he said they normally stunned for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> Fucking ostrich egg, by the way, it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again, mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out of wasp and leaves the carcass. Well this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. What you, you sorted it? You sorted it. What did you, you, you want to say? What did you mean? Well, I said what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, Reap it's best that they don't tell you. Well, what sorry, so, sorry, sorry, but, uh, it, 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 She said she sorted it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it and I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point, I was painting. And she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what, so what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means 
Say it. I've stopped. I've stopped it being. Uh, it's no longer in misery. So what do you mean? What? What did she do? She, she crushed his head. Because she said it was moving about. Well, specifically about. just the head. She just crushed the head. With a stone. She got a tiny head-shaped stone <laughs> and- Squashed it. Because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was- it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with his one leg and stuff. Mm. He had to kill it. I imagine- I had this vision that one day- <laughs> Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um- <laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. I had to put it out of his misery. What? What? I just couldn't bear to see the twitching like anymore. Know, no. I know you didn't like to know, but no. I just took a rock. Yeah, and just squashed its head. What was in it? There was nothing in it. <laughs> nothing in it. it just, just caved in. Was, like. there, was there an egg in it from a- No, no, no. no it, was like, it was like, you know when you will get a, a blown egg and then you crush it and it's just- it's, it's, There was nothing <laughs> just, Yeah, nothing in it at all. Nothing in it but at I just all. think- He seems happier. I'm certainly happier. I, I, I was happier because- I, I'm, I'm much happier because- He's sort of, uh, he's more, more sensible without the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're still happy together, but now we use the dishwasher instead of him washing up. Yeah. When we already got one that cost more than a good. <laughs> what, what metaphor are you taking from this? Just the way... Yeah, so that's at the beginning, there was meant to, there, there was going to be a point you were going to extrapolate for this, like a fable. So what did you learn from that? Um, <clears throat> I thought I was doing right at the time. And well, that's, that's, it, that's isn't important, it? isn't it? And is it objective or subjective? You know, one person's evil is another person's good. Some people think abortion is the worst thing you could do. Others think it's it's a it's a a woman's right and it's a, it's a kindness. It's some people think that you should never kill under any circumstances. Other people say that some killing is morally right. Again, should uh, an action be judged on its intent or its result? If someone said to you, "Oh," I thought I was doing a good thing, but, you know, they opened the windows and your cat fell out. They thought they, would, they, they didn't even know you had a cat. Did they knock it, though, or did it just jump out? It just jumped out. Well, I'd say it's not my fault. Your no. cat's daft. No. It was hot in here. Right. I've opened the window. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not getting the blame for that. No, that wasn't my point, was it? That if you, if you open the window, right? And they come home and you go, oh my god, the cat's jumped out and killed itself. You go, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I opened the window um, because I wanted to let some air in. I was doing a good thing. So I did I going. know it jumped out? No. No. I'd, I'd probably say, you sure they didn't do that before I got here this morning? Did you have the window open? Right. I don't think I... I, I, I looks like it's been there a while. So it's a bit already, hard. you instantly don't want to be culpable for your own actions. I mean, it is Hang your on fault. A it wasn't it me is, you did it. It is your fault the cat's dead. Yeah, it's, your, it's an accident, but nevertheless it's still your rock no, fault. No, if it's definitely me, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it jumped out. I opened the window because it was hot in here. The cat jumped out, dead. Let's go and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't, w wouldn't worry that much about a cat. Right, but what if it was a baby? Well, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> You know, I've been to my mum and dad's, right? I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. Oh, all right. And she was saying how, um, this flower, uh, solved a crime. What yeah. happened was, there was a murder, yeah. right, in an office. So, they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a, sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So, they said, that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. Mm. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet. Yeah, right. right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on, special the, wires. Flower, yeah. on the flower and it's sort of shaking and stuff because it, even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do, we'll put the plant back on the shelf, yep. we'll water it, we'll calm it down, <laughs> then get- <laughs> Give it a nice cup of tea. Then get every then, member of staff- right, To right. come in the room- Yeah. And just go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them- So like a line-up for the flower? Kind yeah, of. Kind of like a line-up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't tell them what we're doing, just send them yeah. in and say, stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day, they were getting through a lot of staff, it was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were going, this isn't working, you know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist, the, pla the plant gives them a- Some, some caretaker fella. Oh. Uh -huh. um, caretaker, yeah. Said, go over there. Was it? You was know, it an old man that, I mean, cause Scooby-Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. 
So, uh, you know, uh, is that, that, why is that janitor so evil? The, they send the caretaker over to the plant, he's going, you know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Mm. Plant starts shaking, what have you. They did him. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? <laughs> Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things, though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you think I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, okay, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. You're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most <laughs> nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but it didn't happen. It. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have... You and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past, mm. and I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews, by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road, and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. Oh, it's rather so like when the, a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a great, no, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers were nice as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right. And Police uh, are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. I mean, the but thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door. And I thought, oh god, this is the fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course it, you were. It came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love it! <laughs> to see how far I could it's throw brilliant. it. It's brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you though. invent that game? Right, <laughs> did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun funny angle, and it, it, of course it, did. it ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it, yeah. you know, in case yeah. you've got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh God. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. <laughs> Genius. It's a brilliant sleep. plan. It's a brilliant <laughs> plan. I <laughs> couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family, who, uh, <laughs> who saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee and my mum said, go and get the door, and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. And went to the door, like, rubbing my eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said That's when he said. looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said? <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid. No, the thing Carl, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl. Now, I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that right? was clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the, the father's support. I don't do even, I, I don't know if, if I If you were help. living in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come home, right, and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years, and just threw mm. your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's the only <laughs> way. And I, don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes <laughs> down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just to... <laughs> so, yeah, equally, um, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because if they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It but won't work. It's like with, with our kid, right, he was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub. But it's. Is this your brother? It, it never, yeah. Because he was a terror, used to be, wasn't he? Well, yeah, a little bit. But it he was did more drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh. Another story. 
But but this time I remember um <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And um I must have been about I don't know, five, so our mark was like I don't know probably eighteen, yeah. something like that, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So my mum and dad go out and our mark says to me, Right, uh here's a deal, do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of uh women round. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow, right. he had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needs the so tractor to put on, his what toys kind along. Of a man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there was loads of, but do you know when you're a kid, you don't think, oh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was, I was... <laughs> but he hasn't, he hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have? Was it just him and, like, a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like, what, what's his name? What's his name? Like, like Nedwell from Confessions? Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came around he, he liked orgy. his women. He li oh, seriously, right, my mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming round saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that in bath. You know, did you hear, when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> did yeah. you ever hear that? Or kind of wow 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 and just see your brother's arse disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing being chased by a butcher. Did you ever it's, it's not important, is it? <laughs>